The Sunday Senator Sadiq Suleiman Umar. Thank you, Mr. President. My distinguished colleagues, I am Sadiq Suleiman Umar. I represent Kwara Nath. I rise to move that the votes and proceedings of Tuesday, the 23rd March 2021, be adopted. I so move. The Sunday Senator Francis. Adenigba, Father Onsi. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Francis, Senator Francis Adenigba, Father Onsi, from Osu East. I'd like to second the motion uh, that the, the votes and procedure, proceedings of Tuesday, 23rd March 2021, be adopted. I should second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the votes and proceedings of Tuesday, 23rd March 2021, be approved, say aye. Those against, say nay. The ayes have it. The votes and proceedings of Tuesday, 23rd March 2021, is hereby approved. Announcement. His Excellency, the Senate President, the Senate Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution will meet tomorrow, Thursday, 25th March 2021, at 12 noon in meeting room 211, Senate Building. Sign Senator Oveo Mo Ayege, Deputy Senate President, Chairman. Another announcement. His Excellency, the Senate President, there will be a meeting of Southern Senators scheduled to hold as follows. Wednesday, 24th March 2021, that is today. Time, 1.30 p.m., venue, conference room, 022 Senate building. The single senators should please endeavor to attend. Signed, Senator Ove Omo Agege, Deputy President of the Senate. Petitions, Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the first business of the day is the presentation of our bill saying in the name of distinguished Senator Bashiru Ajibola on the Nigerian Police Act 2020 Amendment Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished Senators, Nigeria Police Act 2020 Amendment Bill 2021. SB 679, first reading. Nigeria Police Act 2020, Amendment Bill 2021, SB 679, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the second business of the day is the presentation of a bill saying in the name of distinguished Senator Abubakar Shaib Kari. On the Federal Medical Center, Damasak, Borno State, Establishment Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished Senators, Federal Medical Center, Damasak, Borno State, Establishment Bill 2021, SB 682, first reading. Federal Medical Center, Damasak, Borno State, Establishment Bill 2021. 
SB 682, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, the third business of the day is the presentation of our bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Barao Jibirin on the Lobbyist Registration Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished Senators, Lobbyist Registration Bill 2021, SB 683, first reading. Lobbyist Registration Bill 2021, SB 683, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the fourth business of the day is the presentation of our bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Nicholas Olubu Kola Tofuomo on the Araro Mi Seafront Port on the State Establishment Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short text. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished Senators, Araro Mi Seafront Port on the State Establishment Bill 2021, SB 684, first reading. Araro Mi Seafront Port on the State Establishment Bill 2021, SB 684, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the fifth business of the day is the presentation of our bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Muhammad Enagi Bima on the Smallholder Farmers Protection Bill 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished Senators, Smallholder Farmers Protection Bill 2021, SB 674, first reading. Smallholders Farmers Protection Bill 2021, SB 685, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the first order of the day is a motion requesting the Senate to consider the request of Mr. President Commander-in-Chief for the confirmation of the nomination of the following persons for appointment as Chairman and members of the National Human Rights Commission in accordance with the provision of Section 2, Subsection 3 of the National Human Rights Commission Act as amended. Number one, Salamatu Husseini Suleiman, Chairman. Number two, Mrs. Beatrice J.D. Akbar, MNI, member. Number three, Ambassador Umar Zainab Salis, member. Number three, Mrs. Dafe T. Adeshida, member. Number five, Joseph Nyeme T. Mamel, member. Number six, Ahmed Abubakar Fungilla, member. Number seven, Kemi Aswaju Okeonda, member. Number eight, Abubakar Mohammed, member. Number nine, Fermi Okeo, member. Number ten, Sunny Daniel, member. Number eleven, Barista Agobaidu Chukomeka Jidiani, member. Number twelve, Mrs. Nella Andem Rabama, Rabana, San, member. Number thirteen, Azubeke Nwakwenta, member. Number fourteen, Jamila Isa, member. Number fifteen, Mrs. Idaya Omolara Hassan, member. Number sixteen, Professor Anthony Ojuku, member. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, the purpose of this motion on the order paper is to request is for the request of Mr. President and Commander in Chief to be referred to the relevant committee for further legislative action. I therefore move that the request of Mr. President and Commander in Chief be referred to the appropriate committee for further legislative action. Um, I think I, I have noticed something. Uh, the acting whip, Senator Dixon, Se Senator Seraki Dixon, you can have a seat there. So the, the, acti the acting whip will show you a seat. <laughs> okay, leader, have you finished? Have you moved the motion? Leader. Mr. President, I rise to second the motion that the request of Mr. President be referred to the appropriate committee. Distinguished colleagues, 
those in favor of the motion that the request of Mr. President CNC be referred to the appropriate committee for further legislative action say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The request is referred to the committee on judiciary, human rights, and legal matters to report back within two weeks. Uh, leader of the Senate, before I call you, there was an acting uh, whip yesterday. I think we can renew that because all our whips on both sides of the aisle are missing. So the, the acting the acting continues. So, Senator Abalana, you are the acting chief whip on both sides. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the second order of the day is the presentation of consideration of the report of the Committee on Interior on the screening of Mr. Aliru Nababa for appointment as Controller General of Nigeria Correctional Service. Distinguished Senator will recall that the request of Mr. President, Commander in Chief, was referred to the committee on Wednesday, 3rd March 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Kashim Shetima, Chairman of the committee, to move a motion for the presentation and consideration of the report. Distinguished Senator Kashim Shetima. Your Excellency, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise to move that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Committee on Interior on the confirmation of the nomination of Hali Runa Baba as Controller General Nigeria Correctional Services. I so move. Senator, the single Senator Patrick Abamoro. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Abba Patrick Moro representing the very good people of the Benue South Senatorial District. I rise to second the motion moved by my chairman that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Senate Committee on Interior on the confirmation of Alahaji Aliru Nababa as the Controller General of the Nigerian Correctional Service, Services. I so move. I Distinguished colleagues, those involved with the motion that the Senate do receive the report of our committee on the interior, do receive and consider the report of our committee on the interior, say aye. Those against any the eyes have it. Chairman, you may let the report. Dama, you may present the report. Thank you so much, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. On Wednesday, 17th March 2021, the Senate Committee on the Interior screened Hali Runa Baba MNI for the position of the Controller General of the Nigeria Correctional Services. After his nomination by the Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari GCFR. In line with the tradition, the special advisor to the President on National Assembly Matters Senate formally introduced the nominee, Hali Runa Baba MNI, to the committee for screening. During his screening, Nababa stated the urgent need to renovate some correctional centers so as to foresell future incidents of jailbreaks. He also called for an improved funding for the service to delivering 
on the Nigeria Correctional Services Mandate. He further explained that such funds will be channeled towards operational tasks and training to enhance staff capacity building and productivity. The nominally said dilapidated structures, inadequate arms and ammunition, increasing urbanization around prison locations and some of the challenges facing the service. Nababa joined the then Nigeria Prison Service as an assistant superintendent of prisons on 13th August 1990. He rose through the ranks and was promoted to the rank of Assistant Controller General of Corrections on January 1st, 2018. He got appointed as Deputy Controller General of Corrections covering duty on 26 August 2020. He is the head of the Directorate of Finance and Accounts until his nomination as the Comptroller General of the Nigeria Correctional Services by President Muhammadu Buhari in February 2021. Nababa succeeds Jafar Ahmed, who was Comptroller General from May 2016 to January 2021. The committee members commended the nominee for his laudable contributions to the service and his past performances a duty as he was ceremoniously asked to take a vow and leave. Your Excellency, distinguished colleagues, these are our findings. Having made the following findings during the course of the screening exercise, the committee wishes to state accordingly that the committee found the nominee suitable for the position of Comptroller General Two. No petition or incriminatory report was received against the nominee. Three, the nominee possessed the requisite educational qualifications for the position of Controller General CG. Four, the nominee displayed a high level of intelligence and appeared to have the temerity to hold the office of Controller General. Five, the nominee is not affiliated to any political party. Six, he has never participated in any political rally or campaign. Seven, the nominee is a person of integrity. And lastly, the nominee is within the edge bracket for the position. And the recommendation of the committee is after carefully scrutinizing all the relevant documents of the nominee, and after due consideration of his level of meritorious composure, the Senate Committee on Interior hereby recommends as follows. That the Senate do confirm the nomination of Haliruna Baba MNI as the Controller General Nigeria Correctional Services. Your Excellency, my distinguished colleagues, on behalf of the members of the Senate Committee on Interior, I wish to most sincerely thank the President of the Senate, other principal officers, and in and indeed the entire distinguished members of this chamber for giving us the opportunity to serve in this regard. I so move. Any Senator Abomoro? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, I remain Senator Abba Patrick Moro, representing the very good people of the Benue South Senatorial District. Mr. President, I want to lend my voice of support to this recommendation on the fact that Nababa has actually served under me. And at a time when the done prison services was facing great challenges. Prisons were attacked in various parts of the country, especially Sokoto uh, Prison Command, where Nababa was serving at the time. And because of his professionalism, because of the dexterity with which he handled affairs in that command at that time, I, in conjunction with the management of the Minister of Interior, actually wrote a letter of commendation uh, to Nababa. And so when he came up for screening and coincidentally as a member of the committee, I didn't have any hesitation at all in seeing a quality controller general in Nababa. Therefore, Mr. President, 
distinguished colleagues, I want to say that my colleagues, on the basis of his experience and professional attitude to his work, that we should accept the recommendation of the Committee on, of the Senate on Interior on the recommendation of Mr. Baba as the Controller General of the Nigerian Correctional Services. I still submit, Mr. Leader of the Senate, Committee of the Hall. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, I rise to move a motion for this distinguished chamber to resolve in the Committee of the Report to consider this report. I... Minority Leader. Mr. President, I rise to second the motion as moved. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the Senate resolves into Committee of the Whole to consider the report say aye. aye. Those against any that is aye. So much colleagues, we, we do approval at this stage, and I will put the question. Will the Senate approve the nomination of Mr. Hallo Runababa for appointment as Controller General, Nigerian Correctional Service? Those in favor, say aye. Those against, say nay. The aye have it. Leader of the Senate. Mr. So President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, I rise to move a motion for this chamber to resume plenary for the chair to report progress. I so move. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion that the Senate revert to plenary to report progress. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the Senate reverse to plenary for the chair to, repro to report progress say aye. Those against any the ayes have it. The Senate in the Committee of the Hall considered the report of the Committee on Interior on the screening of Mr. President's nominee for appointment as Controller General Nigerian Correctional Service and approved the nomination of Hallor Nababa as Controller General Nigerian Correctional Service. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Hall? Thank you. Confirmation. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Mr. Hallor Nababa for appointment as Controller General Nigeria Correctional Service? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay, the aye have The nomination of Mr. Hallor Nababa is hereby confirmed as Controller General Nigeria Correctional Service. Congratulations, team. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the third order of the day is the presentation and consideration of the report of the Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development on the National Agricultural Development Fund Establishment, etc. Bill 2021. Distinguished Senators will recall that the bill was referred to the Committee on Wednesday, 4th March 2020. Mr. President, you may wish to invite Distinguished Senator Abdullah Adamu, the tracking chef, Chairman of the Committee, to move the motion for the presentation and consideration of the report. Distinguished Senator Abdullah Adamu, Tulaki. Thank you very much, Excellency, Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues. I am Senator Abdullahi Adamu, and I represent Nasara West. It is my privilege, Mr. President, to rise to move the motion that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development on the, on the National Agriculture Development Fund Establishment Bill 2021, SB 119. So move, Mr. President. Senator 
Bima Mohamed Enagi. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, my highly respected distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Bima Mohamed Enagi. I represent the people of Niger South from Niger State. I rise to second the motion that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development in respect of the National Agricultural Development Fund Establishment Bill. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, there was a the motion that the Senate do receive and consider the report of a committee on agriculture and rural development. Say aye. There was again saying that I said, Chama, you may let the report. Chairman, you may present the report. <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, a bill for an act to establish the National Agricultural Development Fund Bill 2021 SB119. Introduction. The Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, at its sitting on Wednesday, 4th March 2020, read for the second time the National Agricultural Development Fund Establishment Bill 2021, SB 119, and the Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development for further legislative action. The bill sponsored by the Chairman Agri Committee seeks, among others, provide for finance to support agriculture development in Nigeria in, in order to ensure food production and food security in Nigeria, provide finance for the implementation of agricultural policies, and to strengthen agricultural institutions with the framework of national priorities and strategies. Funds for on lending to farmers and corporate bodies through appropriate financial institutions, including microfinance banks, cooperative societies, organizations, farmer groups, and institutions on appropriate soft terms. Three, finance, primary, finance primarily for the establishment of spatial agricultural zones in the six geopolitical zones to boost food production systems in Nigeria. Four, finance, financial support in the form of grants for research, training, market information systems, and agricultural extension service in research institutions, universities, and ministry. And five, emergency fund for agricultural finance and intervention for the control of transboundary animal disease outbreaks, participate in the effort to build rural access to financial service through macrofinance by creating linkages between upstream financial centers, including private sector groups, 
and local organizations serving rural poor people. Finally, the bill also seeks to encourage donor institutions to provide funding to the agriculture sector to ensure increased food production. The membership of the committee is there. The, commis the, commis the, 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 the committee's consideration of the bill methodology in carrying out this assignment, the committee adopted the following methodology. Placed advertisements, electronic and print media, calling for submissions of memoranda and participation in the public hearing. Conducted public hearing on Monday the 13th of July 2020 in order to get the views and opinions of stakeholders and the general public. Collated memoranda from the general public and consulted with the legal drafting experts. The following stakeholders, a list of stakeholders that attended. Observation. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, it is widely acknowledged that the major bane of the sector in Nigeria and South Saharan Africa is inadequate funding. To date, Nigeria is here to fully implement the 2003 Maputo Declaration on Agriculture, requiring states parties to allocate 10% of its national budget for agriculture development. If this was done, agriculture research and development, food production and food security would have witnessed a major leap. This bill, therefore, through the availability of the fund, will meet this requirement, among others. Agriculture research funding will ultimately take a lot of research produces, I mean products out of the shell as currently observed to the end users, thereby boosting food production. The funds shall include takeoff grants provide, and provided by the federal government, 0.5% uh, of the development of natural resources fund, 5% of the profit after tax of each commercial bank in Nigeria, 5% of petroleum profit tax, 5% of duties levied on imported rice, wheat, sugar, and milk, etc. Objectives. The, uh, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, with the government's commitment to make agriculture the mainstay of our economy, it is only right to make enabling laws for the purpose of providing sustainable funding for agriculture development in Nigeria, taking into consideration the critical need to address food production, food security, economic diversification, job creation, and international competitiveness of the agriculture sector in Nigeria. This bill seeks to establish the National Agriculture Development Fund for the purpose of providing finance to support strategic aspects of agricultural development of Nigeria. By this bill, the fund is empowered to provide emergency support funding for agricultural control, access to finance, transboundary animal disease outbreak, support service through microfinance and collaborative collaborate with development partners to support food security and agricultural modernization. The fund addresses key binding constraints to complete transition from subsistence farming to modern agriculture capable of generating inclusive growth and a true economic diversification. Recommendations. After a close by close consideration of the bill, the committee recommends as follows. Amended clauses 1 sub 1, 2A and B, 2 sub 1, 2C, 4 sub 1, A and B, 8, D and H, 9, F and I, 11, 2E, 16, 1 and 2, 19, 2A, D, 21, sub 2, 23 to 24, 28, 
schedule one. One sub one, two sub two, three sub one. Renumbered clauses are your seven to fifteen, eleven J, sixteen twenty eight, schedule one, two sub one, four five. Uh, sub 1 to 3, uh, 6, sub 2. Retained clauses are clause 1, sub 2, 2, sub 2, A, B, I to 4, D and E. Uh, 2, 3 to 8, 3, sub 1, A and B, 4, sub 2, 5, to X sub eight A to C E F G I nine sub one and uh, sub A to E G to K M and N ten sub one to three nineteen sub one A and B two and three fourteen one and two uh, sub one and two 18, sub 1 to 3, 19, sub 1, A and B, 20, A and B, 21, sub A, 22, 25, 26, 27. Explanatory notes. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the bill is apt as it comes at a time the federal government is making efforts to diversify the economy of this country. When passed into law, this bill will address the issue of funding the agricultural sector, generate more revenue, and create employment for our teaming youth, thereby curbing crime and criminality. The committee strongly recommends that the passage of this bill into law be fast-tracked to enable key players in the agricultural sector to access sufficient funds and increase production of agricultural produce. Conclusion, the committee would like to thank the Senate President, my very dear colleagues, leadership and all distinguished colleagues for the opportunity given us to serve this in this capacity. Thank you. Any comments, leader? Committee of the whole. The President, I rise to move a motion for this distinguished chamber to resolve into the Committee of the whole to consider this report. I so move. Minority leader. President, I rise to second the motion that the Senate resolve into a committee of all for a class by class consideration. I so. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the Senate resolves into a committee of the whole to consider the report close by close. Say aye. Those against any other side.
Distinguished colleagues, I hope we have, uh, all of us have the copy of the bill. There are 25 clauses in this bill, and this is not a controversial bill. So I will take uh, two clauses at a time. Those in favor. Those in favor that clauses one and two stand part of the bill say aye. Clause yes. two. Clause two. Mr. Chairman, sir, uh, clause two D. One person from each of the six geopolitical zones. Mr. Mr. Chairman, this is a very, very important fund, which has to do with agriculture, which is the mainstay of our economy. Now, taking one person to represent the whole zone, when we have different peculiarities in each state, I think it's quite uh, inadequate. It should be a move for an amendment. One person from each state of the Federation. One person from each state. We have different peculiarities, sir. One state is known for cotton production. Another state is known for granola production. They have different peculiarities. But taking one person in, one, in each political zone, I think it's quite inadequate, sir. Distinguished uh, Senator Barrow, you are suggesting one person from each state. I, I, I hope that we are not going to create a very unwieldy council because when you say one person, there will be about, you will have statutory members. You may end up with 40 or even more than 40, and that is a crowd. But if, if we have a second, I will put, uh, we'll put it to what? Uh, Senator Aller, you also mentioned, is it the same thing? Yes, yeah, Senator Yusuf. Yusuf. seconding it no let me repeat it so that everybody can hear it yeah you need to repeat it so that everybody hears the amendment you are bringing Well, before Senator Alero seconds it, I know that farming is not only about crops. Livestock is also farming. And if you bring livestock, you bring crop and, and fisheries. I think the farming, all farmers association covers everybody. It's an umbrella body, fisheries, livestock, crop growers, and what have you. But Okay, Senator Aleru. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues. It is true that when you talk of uh, all farmers' association, it includes livestock, uh, fisheries, and what have you. But the way it is stated here, it refers to crop production generally. It refers to crop production. And even the intervention, the Central Bank of Nigeria is. Uh, in agriculture is essentially on crop production, nothing on livestock. Yeah. And uh, you know very well that uh, we have a very challenging period on livestock production, particularly uh, the way it poses security 
uh, challenge on, 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 uh, in the country. I think it's better to include it. I therefore support the, uh, the, 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 the amendment as proposed by Senator Issa Mitu. Now I'll put the question because it's not a debate. Somebody proposed. Uh, no, please. Somebody proposed an amendment. So somebody seconded. So he's putting the question, not explaining anything. But, but uh, uh, chairman, do you have any explanation on this? Thank you very much, distinguished uh, 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 chair. The issue being raised by our very dear colleagues were treated in the process of this. The All Francis of Nigeria, where I was privileged to serve some time ago as national president, has got the people who are involved in livestock business, herdsmen. They are all it's all encompassing. And uh, if we, in the course of our discussion, we thought if we now pick the herdsmen, the chances are those who are into fisheries will want to be also, you know, so we start to take them together as one, and they've always been so. I appreciate the fact that we have some little problems here and there today in the country regarding herdsmen, and uh, I have no strong objection except it will go outside what we actually have recommended, and that. I believe that the interest of the government is covered. Um, is it possible to say all farmers association of Nigeria maybe maybe may, may say livestock and fisheries? No, I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking the, the chairman. Is it possible to include fisheries and livestock? Poultry. So, it's long. This is all encompassing. Sorry? So, we can include fisheries as well, in addition to livestock. And poultry. Um, Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, here we are referring to investors. We are referring to entrepreneurs in the different sectors, associations. So all farmers associations of Nigeria is an institution like the Federal Indian Revenue Service, National Food Reserve Agency, Bankers Association of Nigeria, organized private sector to represent a special interest. That's why we can say these are institutions that are to represent, that are to be on the board. Now, if you have all farmers associations of Nigeria, it's a registered institution in Nigeria. And that registered institution have livestock producers, fisheries, poultry farmers, and several other you know, groups in the livestock in the agriculture sector. Therefore, it is, it, is, it is that association that is nominated as representative on this board. Now, to come out and bring in sectoral uh, associations, which may have extra political you know, interests other than the entrepreneurial intentions in this thing, I, th I don't think it's uh, appropriate, you know, for this particular kind of uh, work. Okay. Mr. Chairman, sir, my respected colleague, James Manager, Delta South. Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Chairman, when you talk about uh, agriculture, and particularly this bill we are considering. Senator Abdullah Yadamu was once the national chairman 
on all farmers' associations. He understands this bill. This bill is a product of deep uh, agricultural reasoning. So there's no point bringing in uh, things that will create problems for the bill, in my humble view. So I am bound to go with the viewpoint of Senator Abdullah Yadamu, who is the chairman of this committee, who was once the chairman of the uh, National Association of All Farmers in this country. So there's no point bringing in things that will make the bill to go well. That is my humble view. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I, I think all that we are trying to do, everyone, including the uh, motion for the uh, uh, amendment, is to create focus and attention for the various uh, sectors or subsectors of agriculture. Livestock uh, is, is so critical, and of course, funding for livestock is very important, so is fishery, so is poultry, and so on. I, I think even if we don't mention the specific uh, subsectors and we're able to be vigilant and do our own oversight, uh, we should insist that the different sectors are funded by government. Or CBN, when CBN gives 200 billion naira support for uh, when they say large scale farming or whatever it is normally most of it goes to crop production and i think that is where the problem is and i, I can see the amendment being sought or the additional suggestion is maybe to close that gap but i think we can we, we can do without the amendment and yet be able to have more funding for the different uh, sectors that is if we are vigilant Senator Alero. I agree with what you said, but if you are making law, it's always better to be more specific. Because when it comes to interpretation, it will be very, very easy. But if you leave it just like that, it will be ambiguous. It's better to be specific and mention livestock, poultry, and fishery. Uh, 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 even in the definition of all farmers, we should maybe in bracket mention livestock production, fisheries, and poultry farming. by Senator Aleru and uh, distinguished Senator Yusuf will come for clarity in Section 8, Functions and Powers of the Board. Now there we will look into different sections and then we can itemize that to provide funds for all lending to farmers in crop production, livestock production, poultry, fish, as possible. So that is very clear in the function of the board. But when it comes to the presentation, it's better to have existing institutions who now will send a representative. But when it comes now to lending, we will ensure that all the sectors in the agriculture sector are covered. Otherwise, now, you will have a problem. The old farmers association will not have, a, unless you are going to list all these institutions, farmers will bring their own, crop farmers. Fisheries will bring their own. Before we know what is happening, this board will consider about 20 different sectors of agriculture. I am an agriculturalist, although a teacher, but also a small private peasant farmer. But I have been teaching agriculture for 20 years. So at least I know something that I'm talking about. We are talking about institutions that represent farmers on the board. But when we come to the functions of the board, then we can clarify so that the no sector or subsector of agriculture is lost when it comes to the funding under uh, this fund. Senator Nalad.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we are debating something and we don't have to forget about something. What I mean is um, when we say all farmer association, when we talk about farmer association means, you know, we added livestock, fisheries, poultry, all together to form only one association. So, if we add it together, we call them farmer association. And that is the truth of the matter. So, we don't have to diversify it. This is my submission. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, Senator Yusuf, are you satisfied with this explanation or you still want, you still want uh, this thing? Senator Yusuf. Um, uh, we, we do respect. You see, we are talking about representation. You can have an old farmer member representing only the crop side. So it is very, very important because this industry that we are talking about, the livestock, the fisheries, the poultry, it is a fundamental, you know, uh, 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 industrial, you know, uh, that makes impact in this country. So I think it is better to have their representation and when we go to section, say, uh, I mean... Okay, I will take the two. I will now separate clause one from clause two. Uh, there is no problem with clause one. It's in clause two that is an amendment be sought. So those in favor that clause one stands for the bill say aye. aye. Those against say need aye silent. Those in favor that clause two Stands part of the will as amended. Yes. No, 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 no. There is, there is an amendment already. Yes. So we will vote on that. No further amendment for yes. clause two. So those in favor that clause two as amended. As amended means we are yes. itemizing. Yes. Yes. So you vote yes, yes if you want it itemized. Yes. And you vote nay if you want it to remain as it is. Okay. So those in favor that clause two as amended, stands part of the bill. Say aye. aye. Those against say nay. No, you t I will have to put it again. Those in favor that clause two as amended, stands part of the bill. Say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. You, you. Clause three and four. No, I'm 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 here to read clause three and four. Sorry. Yeah, you can have other amendment. Yeah, okay. Mr. Chairman, I I'm suggesting a further amendment to um, clause two, subsection two. Because of the because of the importance of um, agri, sir, we are moving away from the traditional form of farming to the scientific form, and I believe that under a representation by ministry, ministry of science and technology should be included. For instance, well, just one representation, one person representing federal ministry of science and technology. So, Yes, because of the remote sensing by technology, they are very important in modern farming. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I rise to second the amendment as proposed by Professor Borofis. I so second. There is a further amendment to clause two. Proposed by Senator Robert Ajaibar, first deputy leader, that we include the representative of Ministry of Science and Technology. Those in favor of this amendment say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Close three and four. Amendment what? No amendment to. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, clause two has defined the composition of the board, which we have just ruled on. The two four says that the president may vary the composition of the board after consultation with the minister. I want us to uh, uh, reconcile it with the fact that the board shall consist of, in, in, in clause two, it is sacrosanct. And in that clause two four, varying, uh, uh, giving the president the powers to vary the composition of the board is what I, the chairman should clarify so that we have an understanding of what we are, we are approving. Thank you. Well, before the chairman, my understanding first. My understanding is the composition will not affect the representation. That is to say that if we are talking about all farmers, the, the law will not give the president the power to remove the representation of all farmers and bring a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical society of Nigeria, for example. But maybe the person representing the all farmers uh, association could be changed, but there will be another person to represent that same organization. But the chairman can explain that better. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished chair, distinguished colleagues. Essentially, that SAPO is a safety valve. This fund, once established, is a public institution. And we believe that if for any reason Mr. President has cause to take attention on what is happening and find the necessity, like we just did a while ago, the issue of uh, uh, livestock, by the time this thing starts operating, we may have some other issue that has not come to us as human beings at the time we are considering. And so the President should have the leeway if there's necessity to uh, vary the composition of the board, that is membership. And we believe we're acting in consonance with uh, good governance. The issue is, what is the definition of composition? I think that's the, the issue. Because my understanding is that the composition is the, the number, the, the people, the representation, not the listed and approved by law groups. That is to say that the president may change the representation, but not to bring people from outside of the governing council as provided by law. That's my understanding. So what is, what is the composition? What is the definition of the composition? Because that's why the, I think that is the issue. My, my own understanding in this case is a bit different. My understanding is that apart from those that have been mentioned in 2B, the president can insert any other uh, institution that you may so consider it, the development of the board, you know, to come in. So the, you are giving power to Mr. President to amend, to amend Section 2B at any point in time. You can introduce new elements into the composition of the board. Eh? Section 2B. That, that, what section... That's section four. Section two. If you look at section two, uh, section three, four. Or, or section three, four. Give the president the power to amend section two B. Mm, 
the leader i have a problem with that just hold on please i have a problem with that because when we make a law the law should guide all the processes if you allow that kind of provision i can tell you one minister of agriculture will just go to the president one day and say remove this remove this remove this remove this and at the end of the day no 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 i'm just because it's not about the president it's about the minister who may not even like the people that will be there so he could you could easily go and cause problems so i i, I want to say dsp thank you mr president delta central central district mr president you spoke on my mind to begin with the power to appoint has, has already been confirmed mr president uh, under uh, uh, section three here this section four is superfluous we do not need it because like as you rightly pointed out most especially after consultation with the minister and we know all of the challenges we face in this country if you check all of the enabling acts for most of the parasitos and what have you where the president shall appoint subject to your recommendation of the minister you turn the ministers into de facto presidents and that's what we are suffering today to the extent that we've even had ministers who said that the president made appointment without their own recommendation and therefore challenged the appointment on that ground because they turned themselves into de facto presidents so mr president even if you use the word subject to our recommendation or consultation with the minister you are conferring on the minister power that ought not to be his so i think this very uh, section is superfluous the power to appoint we've already given the president we should leave it at that and just delete this section four thank you mr president Chairman, you presided very well when you read our minds, supported by the Deputy Senior President. All appointees, especially the ministers, are appointees of Mr. President. And Mr. President will determine whoever is going to be in certain positions. We will not want in such a situation we have with the tail, we walk the dog, instead of the dog wagging the tail. So I'm of the opinion, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we expunge this in entirely, because this is just going to give ministers powers that will compete with Mr. President. I so submit. So we... I'll put the question uh, again. Maybe I will take uh, clause two in some clauses so that we are able to vote on that particular um, two four, isn't it? It's two four we are talking about. So those in favour that clause clauses two one two three stand part of the bill say i amendment dsp two three two three uh if i may read the chairman and members shall be appointed by the president on the recommendation of the minister mr president this escaped me i just found it now I think we should put this to a test. We don't want the minister, you know, making the recommendation. The president is free to consult if he wishes, but it should not be part of the law. As written right now, an appointment can be challenged if made by the president, but not on the recommendation of the minister. And we've seen that happen before. Let us just say, it should read, the chairman and members shall be appointed by the president, period. The president is at liberty as the chief executive to consult with his minister or indeed anybody he so wishes. But it should not be part of the law that he shall consult with uh, a minister. But that would be a basis to vitiate uh, that law, that appointment. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. 
Thank you, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues. I rise to second, as suggested by the, uh, by the Deputy Senate President, Distinguished Senator Omo Agege, that the, Mr. President is free to consult whoever he deem fit to consult in making nomination or appointment of whatever office. Thank you. Segregate, uh, Father. Those in favor that closes close two one and two sub two one and two remain. Yes, you seconded. Yep. Confirmation subject to the confirmation by the Senate. It shouldn't come. But what I'm saying is the DSP didn't, uh, you are bringing an entirely different amendment now. So please, let's vote on this one first. Let's vote on what is on the floor. Those in favor that clause 2, sub 1 and 2, as amended, stand part of the bill, say I. No, 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 not as amended. No. We amended three. We are amending, I'm putting the vote on three alone. Because three is the, sub three is the one that he raised. So one and two have not been amended. Those who are at sub clause two, sub one and two, stand part of the bill, say aye. Those against any the aye side. Those who are at clause two, sub three, as amended, stands part of the bill, say aye. Those against any, the eyes have it. Those who are at clause two, sub clause four, as amended, that is expunging. As amended, that it is going. If you vote yes, it means it is deleted. If you vote uh, nay, it means it's retained. So those who are at clause two, sub clause four, as amended, Stands part of the bill say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Those who are at clause two, sub clauses five, six, seven, and eight, stand part of the bill say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Clauses three and four. Those who are at clauses three and four, stand part of the bill say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Clauses 5 and 6. Those who are at clauses 5 and 6 stand part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the aye side. Clauses 7 and 8. Clause 7 is on page 5. Those who are at clauses 7 and 8 stand part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the eyes have it. Eight, leader. Leader. Eight A. Provide finance to support agricultural development in its various ramifications. In its various ramification, including livestock production A on page 6. Eh? No, that is part 2. That is part 2. The, shape, the fun, uh, functions and fund and powers of the board. Page 5. No, if you look at my own that I have, Eight starts from page five. Kai Clark, you should have corrected everybody's. Not only mine, and I ask you, 
Some are corrected. Seven and eight on page five is now seven. Is six. And so on and so forth. So leader, are you correcting clause seven? Okay, which part of clause seven? A. Okay. That the fund shall provide finance to support agricultural development in Nigeria in all its ramifications, including crop production, livestock production, fisheries, poultry, forestry, uh -huh. fisheries, poultry, what it is in, in some senses. Etc. Taking into consideration the need to provide food production and food security in Nigeria. It's just to clarify those issues, what the fund can be used for in the agricultural sector, so that no subsector can claim that it is not considered in the main area of funding for agriculture. You say animal husbandry, you say that? No, we said to provide finance to support agricultural development in Nigeria in all its ramifications, including crop production, laptop production, fisheries, etc., poultry, etc., taking into consideration the need to provide food production and food security in Nigeria. No, no, it should be including but not limited to. No, whatever you are going to do, I just. Uh, I just have an observation with this forestry because. Forestry, you can have agroforestry, and that is not forestry. Forestry is a separate endeavor that should be under environment. But agroforestry, where you can plant trees to protect your farm or maybe whatever it is, and that is, that is crop agriculture. So if we put forestry, Somebody will come from environment and say he has money there. Okay. And that will reduce the availability of funds. Okay. Huh? Yeah, so maybe we look at this forestry thing carefully. Agroforestry uh -huh. Agro is okay. So and, and the DSP mentioned something that we leave it a little bit open to include but not limited to so that uh, those things that we have not been able to capture here in agriculture, because there are so many aspects that we have not put here, at least uh, the, the council can now look at and, and, and consider. So, leader, uh, seconder from this side. Mr. Chairman, I rise to second the amendment as proposed by the leader including agroforestry. I so submit. Including but not limited to, not limited to agroforestry. Seven alone, now because seven is amended. Those in favor of clause seven as amended stands part of the bill. Say I. Sorry? Sorry? 7C. No, let's put the question, then we can take it. But you can, you can bring it up. Okay. Um, Mr. President, 7C, I think should read better in this form. I am suggesting this. To provide funds to credible individual and corporate bodies uh, for, I mean, to lend for farming, livestock, fishery, poultry, and through corporate financial institutions. No, through corporate financial institutions. 
as defined by banks and other financial institutions act of 2020 as amended straightforward sir because if we say through appropriate financial institutions including microfinance uh, microfinance banks corporate societies organizations farmers groups and institutions Bofia does not yes so but Bofia has clearly defined what financial institutions are so i think we can use uh, uh, as defined by Bofia. you said credible individuals yes now first of that all, means they can there can be people who are not farmers no credible individual and corporate bodies to learn for farming livestock and what have you uh, the why why are we excluding farmers because this is essentially their own if you say credible individuals there can be people who are not in farming business we say for, we say for farming sir we say for farming okay i need a second because corporate, corporate bodies does not so sorry okay what i will do I will put the question without this aspect, this of clause, because I, I, I don't want to mix. Because if we say, we, we put the question on what the leader uh, amended, the sub clause, and then we come to that one. At the moment, we will not put the question on this. When you second the amendment, then we put a question on it. The same colleagues, those in favor that clause 7, A, B, as amended, stand part of the bill. Say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Those who hold that clause 7, sub clause, sub clause C. No, you second first. Second amendment. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I'd like to second the amendment to Clause 7C as proposed by Senator Yusuf Yusuf. I so move, Mr. President. It's okay, Senator Yusuf. You, you, you mention it again, please, thank, thank so you. that everybody can hear. I said the amendment will go as follows. To provide funds to credible individuals and corporate bodies to learn for farming, livestock, fisheries, poultry through appropriate financial institutions as defined by banks and other financial institutions act 2020 as amended senator so with me and that to me second please mr president i'd like to second the proposed amendment to section 7c i so second So much colleagues, so there is an amendment by Senator Yusuf on 7 sub clause C. And if you want his amendment, you vote yes. If you are not supporting it, you vote nay. So uh, just, just hold on. We, are, we, are, we have to put it to vote. Those, no, 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 no. Vote. Those in favour that clause seven C, as amended, as amended, stands part of the bill. S say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Aye. The nays have it. Clause seven. Those in favor of clause 7D, E, okay, clause 7, Senator Barrow Jibrim. Sir, 
seven D. Provide finance primarily, primarily for the establishment of special agricultural zones in the six geopolitical zones. Sir, so I want to move for amendment instead of six geopolitical zone to be each state of the federation. Geopolitical zone, I mean, uh, agricultural zone in each state of the federation. In each state of the federation, sir. My name is Saidu al -Ghali. I rise to second for the amendment of clause of section 8D as proposed by Senator Barrow Jigre. I so move. What we are, the amendment that has just been seconded is on 7 sub D, not 8, 7. Chairman. Thank you very much, distinguished chair. chair. I think we need to clarify that sub D. The fact that you have this in the six geopolitical zones does not suggest that each political zone does not have just one such exercise. The provision financed primarily for the establishment of special agricultural zones, it can have in one geopolitical zone, can have as many as the, the requirement would, uh, the needs would, 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 would determine. But if you say, what, if you say state, I think it's been a bit too, too, too well. There is already a motion amending this, and I will put the question. Those in favor that clause 7 sub clause D as amended stands part of the bill say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Those in favor that clause 7 sub clauses E, F, G, H, and I stand part of the bill. Say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Those in favor that clauses 8 and 9 stand part of the bill. Say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Clauses 10 and 11. Those in favor that clauses 10 and 11 stand part of the bill. Say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. is on page 10. Yes. Ten is on page ten. No. Financial provisions. So which one? Okay. So those involved at clauses twelve and thirteen. Amendment, which which clause? Eleven. San Musa. Clause uh, eleven, C and D. When we say we are taking five percent of profit after tax of each commercial bank, and then D five percent of the profit uh, petroleum profit tax, these banks have already been taxed. In each bank, after tax, there is education levy. There are so many other levies. And if we charge 5% of their profit, it's too much. So I would suggest that we charge 0.5% of profit after tax of each commercial bank in Nigeria and close D, 5%, I mean 0.5% of the petroleum profit tax. I so move. 
what is the amendment? The amendment is that um, 11C. Okay, 10C. 0.5% of profit after tax of each commercial bank in Nigeria. I want it 0.5%. If we are taking 5% of their tax, I mean of their profit, it's too much. Zero point five. The same thing for the petroleum profit tax. Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and um, their, uh, distinguished colleagues. Um, I'm equally supporting uh, the amendment as proposed, and um, in supporting, let me also give a bit of clarity. No. No, it's even good that okay. Okay, okay. So I second. Those in um, favor of the amendment, no, 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 until we put the, the question. Then you can do your counter motion. Those in favor that clause clause ten sub one stands part of the bill say I that was again saying it I said no that is not that is not the amended uh, this thing close one <laughs> close ten sub one is is close one close ten sub one is not amended so you don't have to vote nay <laughs> Okay, this is where those of you that clause 10 sub clause 2A and B, you do, there is no amendment. Those in favor that, clo, cl, just hold on, clause 10 sub clause 2A and B, stand part of the bill, say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the aye side. The amendment now. No, the, the, we have to vote on the amendment first. No, we have to vote on the amendment first. If you have an amendment, you can bring it later. But we have to vote on this. Uh -huh. Those in favor that clause 10, sub clause 2, uh, C and D as amended. Leader, let's, let's vote. Okay, what is the observation, leader? Let's not be on the emotional. Let 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 be. Let us not be on the emotional side of this. We are all agriculturalists, but look at the look at what C actually says. It says five percent of profit after tax of each commercial bank. Now what you are saying is that those investors in the fund in the banks. The government has already taken its own out. Yes. You, are take, you are taxing the money belonging to people who made investment in banks. That's exactly what you are doing. Because even after tax, the money of the government has already gone out to the government. So if the people, you are, you, you are reducing their take home fail through dividends. You are cutting the dividends of all those who have invested in banks. How fair is that to take 5% of their dividends? How fair? Then this is the issue that we are voting for. I'll put the question. Chairman, you have an explanation? So just as a reminder, distinguished chair, these figures, these figures were considered in this hollow chamber before the referral for us to go for public hearing. And we didn't alter anything from what we didn't alter anything from what the referral was. Is it there? <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, I will put the question now. Those in favor that clause 10, sub clause 2, C and D, as amended, as amended, as amended stands part of the bill. And before you vote, as amended is reducing the 5%, 
in both C and D to 0.5 percent. So, so those those in favour that the amendment is upheld, say aye. aye. Those against, say nay. Aye. Okay, I will take it again. Those in favour, <laughs> I should be ready. Those in favour that clause 10, sub clause 2, C and D as amended. Stand part of the bill, say aye. aye. Those against, say nay. The eyes have it. Those in favour that clause 10, sub clause 2, E. E stands part of the bill. Say aye. Those against any the eyes have it. Those in favour that clause 11. Clause 11 is on page 11. Clause 11, clause 12, stand part of the bill. Say aye. Those against say nay, they are silent. 11, Senator Surajuddin Bashiru, Ajibo. Mr. Chairman, Surajuddin Ajibo Bashiru, also Center. Clause 11, there appear to be one, uh, a, a typo of, in terms of cross referencing in the recommendation of the committee. The board may from time to time apply the process of the account established in section 12.1. It should now read section 10.1 because the account is now in section 10.1 by the renumbering that has been done. Uh, that is uh, basically typo. But my amendment as it relates the substantive provision. Section 12, section 11 now did not even provide that the proceed of the account should be defray for the function of the amendment. The, the, the it should be cross 10, yes. I'm, I'm making my submission in relation to clause 11. I'm saying the cross referencing should be to clause 10, not clause 12.1, as in the committee recommendation. It should be clause 10. The board may from time to time apply the proceeds of the account established in section 10.1 of this bill, not section 12.1. But a substantive amendment which I want to propose is that there's a need to include a specific subparagraph that the account should be used for the function of the fund. When you look at section 11 uh, A to D, there is no provision that even the account should be used for the function of the board as established in section 7 of the, of the bill itself. So I want to propose an insertion of a new paragraph A to section 11 to read the board may from time to time apply the proceed of the account established in section 10 one of these acts to A the functions of the fund under this bill to undertake the functions of the fund should be the first subparagraph to A, then the other will be numbered accordingly. Say you are proposing an amendment, an additional provision that the board and that is clause 11 the board may from time to time apply the proceed of the account established in section 10 1 and we need to correct it's not 12 1 of this act to a what are you suggesting as a okay what happens to the present a will it be b that will be b to undertake the functions of the board. And I think that's appropriate. Any seconder? Yes, Senator Aidi Gyan. Uh, chairman and members, I rise to second the amendment ably moved uh, by Senator Sudajuddin, and I so second. 
much. And um, before I put the question on 11 now as amended, uh, Secretariat, you correct the, the board may from time to time apply the process of the account established in section 10, not 12. The second, the, the third uh, column. Huh? Okay, those involved that clause 11 as amended stands part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Those involved that clause is 11 and uh, 12 and 13 stand part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Those involved that clause is 14, 15, 16, and 17 stand part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay, the eyes have it. Clauses 18, 19, and 20. Those who are at clauses 18, 19, and 20 stand part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay, the eyes have it. Clauses 21, 22, and 23. Those who are at clauses 21, 22, and 23 stand part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay, the eyes have it. Clauses 24, and 25, those were the clauses. Those clauses stand by to the BCI. Sorry? Clause 24. 24. Yes, Senator Yusuf. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, going back to clause, uh, clause C, page 6, where we talk about where the nurse has it, there is what is the definition of the appropriate financial institutions? Because we are coming to, when we come to... So what is the amendment so that you are proposing? No, I'm going to add an interpretation uh, to what uh, appropriate financial institution should be, because it is not in the interpretation. Okay, propose. So my, I'm proposing that financial institution should be as defined by the banks and other financial institutions act as amended of 2020, 2020 as amended. We add that interpretation there. So those in favor that clause 24 as amended stands part of the bill, say No, sir. No, sir. Huh? no, no, no. You have to, uh, you vote. No, it's a, it's a, it has to do with the draft, sir. No, you have to vote first. Oh, okay. Because it's amendment, you can't, you can't, uh, those who vote at clause 24 as amended stands part of the bill say aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. Senator Badanala. Sir, the clause 24 used the word give. Uh, and it's not an elegant, uh, elegant way of uh, putting the provision. The minister may issue, not give. Subject to the provision of this act, the minister may issue to the board directions of general nature instead of give. Sen Senator Professor Nora Duadut. Thank you, Mr. President. I am Senator Nora Ladi Duadut, representing Plateau South. I stand to second the amendment proposed by Senator Bala uh, Naalla. Na I so second. Those who voted at clause 24 as amended, stands part of the bill say aye. Those against any the eyes. Clause 25, those who voted at clause 25, stands part of the bill say aye. Those against any the eyes have it. Those in favor that the schedules stand part of the bill say aye. Those against any the eyes have it. The explanatory memorandum, those in favor that the explanatory memorandum stand part of the bill say aye. Those against any the eyes have it. The short title, those in favor that the short title stands part of the bill say aye. Those against any the eyes have it. The long title on page one, those who are the long title stands part of the bill say aye. Those against say nay, the eyes have Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, I rise to move a motion for this distinguished chamber to 
resume plenary to allow the chair to report progress. I so move. Minority leader. Mr. Chairman, I rise to second the motion that the Senate revert to plenary to report progress. Distinguished colleagues, those involved at the Senate reverse to plenary for the chair to report progress say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the aye is having. Distinguished colleagues, the Senate and the Committee of the Hall and the Committee of Supply considered the report of the Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development The Senate and the Committee of the Hall considered the report of the Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development on the National Agriculture Development Fund, Establishment Bill 2021, and approved as follows. Long title as recommended, clauses, clause, clause 2, clauses 1, clause 1 as recommended, clause 2 as amended, clause 3 to 6, clauses 3 to 6 as recommended, clause 7 as amended, Clauses 8 to 9 as recommended, clauses 10 to 11 as amended, clauses 12 to 23 as recommended, interpretation as amended, short title as recommended, schedule as recommended, explanatory memorandum as recommended. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the committee of the hall? Thank you. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, I write to move a motion for this distinguished Senate that the National Agricultural, Land, uh, National Agricultural Development Fund Establishment Etc. Bill 2021 be now read the third time. I so move. Minority Leader. Mr. President, I write to second the motion that's moved by the Leader. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the bill be now read the third time. Say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the Senate Senators, a bill for an act to establish the National Agricultural Development Fund and matters connected there with 2021, SB 119, third reading. A bill for an act to establish the National Agriculture Development Fund and matters connected there with 20 to 12 been taken and the bill is passed. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. It has been a very exhaustive uh, exercise, but it's worth it. And I want to congratulate the Committee Chair on Agriculture and Rural Development and the members who have done a very good job. And it is very important that this bill gets the uh, presidential... Um, 
signature because this is one bill that can transform the economy of Nigeria. This one bill that can provide employment opportunities for Nigerians, especially our youth. This is one bill that will create wealth for Nigerians. And this is one bill that can stabilize the Nigerian security situation once we are able to, to have more funds for our, our agricultural sector. Uh, everybody will be busy, both in the rural and urban areas. Congratulations once again. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the fourth order of the day is the presentation and consideration of the report of the Joint Committee on Communications and Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions on Al Haji Bashir Abdullahi and five others against MTN Group Limited and Airtel Nigeria for alleged unbearable noise and discomfort caused by a telecommunication mask at number 20 Okaag Bay Street, Garki Abuja. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Olure Midi Chade Tinubu to move the motion for the Senate to receive and consider the report. Distinguished Senator Olure Midi Tinubu. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. My name is Olure Midi Tinubu, representing Lagos Central Senatorial District. I rise to move the motion that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Joint Committee on communications and ethics and privileges and public petitions in respect to petition by Alaji Bashir Abdullah and five others against MTN Group Limited and Airtel Nigeria for alleged unbearable noise and discomfort caused by telecommunication mass mounted at number 20 Okeage Street, Gariki, Abuja. I so move, Mr. President. I need a second. Senator Nora, Professor Nora Ladi Dadut. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, I rise to second the motion moved by Senator Oloremi Tinibo. I so submit, uh, I so second. Chairman, you may let the report. Chama, you may present the report. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The Senate, the Senate at its sitting on Tuesday, 1st December 2020, considered the report of the Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petition on a petition by Alaji Bashir. Abdullah and five others against MTN Group Limited and Airtel Nigeria for alleged unbearable noise and discomfort caused by telecommunication mass mounted at 20 Okeagbe okay, Street, Kariki Abuja, and recommitted them to the Joint Committee on Communications and Ethics, Privileges, and Public Petition for further legislative action. So I'm going to crave the indulgence of uh, the Senate to move on since everybody has the report that we should move on to uh, the observations because what happened that was everybody was represented. So I will move to observ uh, observations to findings and then a recommendation if you don't mind Mr. President. Is that all right? You may go ahead. So after carefully scrutinizing the submissions of the petitioners and the respondent, the committee noted as follows. One, that the mast at number 20 Okeagbe Street, Kariki Abuja, is owned by IHS, who provides infrastructural service to MTN. Two, that Airtel Nigeria does not have any link with the said mast at um, 
the same address. Three, that upon investigation, NESRA observed that environmental impact statement, EIS, could be, not be cited at the site of construction of the mast and immediately requested for it. Four, that the com joint committee is yet to be informed that IHS has complied with NESRA's demand for statutory environmental impact statement from the Federal Ministry of Environment. Five, that despite the request in paragraph three and the stop work notice by Nestria, IHS did not comply but went ahead to complete the installation of the map. Six, the Joint Committee further observed that, the most, that most of the resolutions reached to salvage the situation as detailed in the initial report of the Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions were not implemented by IHS. Seven, that the space of three months being speculated by IHS to connect to the national grid is too long, considering that the safety of the residents could be at risk. Eight, that the joint committee's attempts at mutually uh, be beneficial resolution of the issue failed and nine, the Joint Committee is wary of the risk of harm and health effects on the residents around number 20 Okeagbe Street due to mass collapse, exhaust fumes, vibration, and high noise level being made by the generator, especially when called to. Our recommendations. Based on the findings above, the Joint Committee hereby recommends that one, that while the intention of the Joint Committee is mainly to ensure sustainable development, but not to impede businesses, it is our opinion that the safety and quality of human lives should be of primary consideration and cannot be compromised. Also, considering the lack of consensus among the scientific community as to health effects of radio frequency on humans, the Joint Committee hereby recommends that the mass at number 20 Okay, at the street, Kariki Abuja should be removed forthwith and be relocated to a safer and more environmental friendly site. And two, the IHS should proceed to obtain necessary environmental impact statements from the Federal Ministry of Environment in compliance with NESJA requirements, especially before commencing the installation of its mass at subsequent locations. Conclusion. Mr. President, I move that the Senate do approve the recommendations of the Joint Committee. I so move. Thank you, Mr. President. And distinguished colleagues. <sighs> Comments? Senator Balogibri. Thank you, Mr. President. I am Senator Balogibri. I don't know what Mr. President, permit me to commend the Joint Committee for a job well done. Mr. President, this is the highest assembly in this country. We need to protect our people. What is going on by certain organizations, particularly like uh, the IHS, that erect mass in residential areas? everywhere in this country, not only in Abuja, every town and city in this country, you find these mines residential areas. This is not good for the health of our people. There may be accident, this mine can fall, and even it has been emphasized that it has some health hazards. There's health hazard associated with this, the emission that come from uh, these installations. And all attempts to make people understand the need to erect this mass away from the residents of, of, of the people, the residential areas, have, you know, have not been taken seriously by these companies. Uh, it is good that this case has been brought to the fore, and this should be a wake-up call. It should be a wake-up call to these companies to stop what they are doing. They are putting uh, people in a situation where their health will be compromised and that should stop. Mr. President, I urge my colleagues to lend their voices 
to the uh, recommendation of this committee so that what is happening, the erection of masks everywhere in this country should stop. They should erect these masks away from the residence of people, where the residential area. The sandwich, please round up, because we are supposed to go on the recommendations rather than debating. I want my colleagues to support the recommendations so that uh, what is being done by erecting you know, mass in residential area should stop this fault. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Alero. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Premier Mohammed Adam Aleru. Mr. President, let me start by commending the committee for a job well done. And um, I'm of the opinion that this should be extended to all masks that are installed or, or that are installed in residential areas uh, because they pose very serious health hazards. So, I support the recommendation of the committee and uh, I want all my colleagues to do it. And not only that, Mr. President, we should do all we can to protect, you know, the health of our citizenry. Uh, by doing so, we will be living up to our responsibilities. Thank you very much. The so much colleagues will go to the recommendations. Um, there are two recommendations on page 9 of the report. Recommendation 1, those who voted at recommendation 1, those who voted at recommendation 1, they approved say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have Recommendation 2. Those in support of recommendation 2 say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chairman, and of course the, the Joint Committee. This is um, something that bothers on the health of our students, like uh, our distinguished colleagues have said. Unfortunately, we are not able to extend to other similar situations because this came under a petition. And uh, until we have a motion seeking for resolutions that will provide for the same kind of uh, uh, situation that we don't allow masts to be constructed uh, near uh, residences, residential areas of our people. But um, this is a good uh, message to the agencies that, and companies that are responsible for uh, approving the construction of, of, of masts. Thank you very much. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the fifth order of the day, the second reading of the University Teaching Hospitals Reconstitution of Both Etc. Act, U15, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, Amendment Bill 2021. The Chief Secretary Representatives will recall that the bill was read the first time in this chamber on Wednesday, 17th March 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Aisha to Ahmed. Benani to move the motion for the bill to be read a second. Senator Aisha to Ahmed. And my distinguished colleagues, Aisha to Dairo Ahmed Benani, representing Adama Central. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I'm delighted to lead the debate on the general principle of the University Teaching Hospitals, the Constitution of Boards, Act No. 101985, Amendment Bill 2021. This bill was read for the first time on the 17th March 2021. The objective of this bill is to amend the University Teaching Hospitals, the Constitution of Boards, ETC, Act No. 101985. In this bill, referred to as the Principal Act, to, introduce, to include an additional teaching hospital, the Modibo, Adama teach, the Modibo Adama University Teaching Hospital, 
thereby giving full recognition to the teaching hospital sought to be included in the principal act through this bill. In particular, the bill seeks to amend the first schedule to the principal act by A, inserting after the existing item O, new item P to read the Modi Boadama University Teaching Hospital. Essentially, the proposed amendment when passed will complete all the required legislative enactment to bring the Modi Boadama University Teaching Hospital into full operation. Mr. President, there is no need for elaborate debate on this bill. The purpose is to complete the required legislative enactment to bring about the establishment of the teaching hospital, which was extensively debated in this chamber. I therefore move with your permission that the bill be read the second time and referred to the relevant committee. Someone should say something. Okay, Senator Matthew Uregide. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Senator Matthew Uregide. I represent the South Central District. Mr. President, I stand, I stand to lend my support to this uh, bill. Uh, we recall that some time ago, this uh, this bill was, uh, was mentioned and uh, the necessity for its existence already established. This bill now just sought to include the teaching hospital on the list of the already existing teaching hospitals in our country. So I don't think we will subject it to any more discussions, Mr. President. I just thought that, you know, the, this distinguished Senate will consider this bill and pass it for a second reading. Thank you very much. Thank you for that uh, intervention and suggestion. Those who voted this bill be now read a second time. Say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the Sungui Senators, a bill for an act to amend the University to Hospital Reconstruction of Boards, ETC, at CAP U15, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and for related matters, 2021, SB648, second reading. A bill for an act to amend the University Teaching Hospital's Reconstruction of Boards ETC Act Cap U15 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 and for related matters 2021 second reading taken and the bill is referred to the Committee on Health to report back within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. The President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the sixth order of the day is the second reading of Families of Fallen Servicemen Support Fund, Establishment Bill 2021. The Tungu Senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in the Tungu Chamber on Thursday, 18 February 2021. Mr. President, we will invite the Tungu Senator Patrick Abamoro to move the motion for this bill to be read the second time. Senator Abamoro. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Mr. President, by your indulgence, on the consent of my colleagues, I seek your permission to lead the debate on the bill for an act to establish the families of Fallen Heroes Servicemen Support Fund and matters connected here with 2021. If you permit, Mr. President, I will lead the debate. Go ahead, you may proceed. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the bill was read for the first time in this revert chamber on Thursday, 18th February 2021. The main intent of this bill, Mr. President, is to, among other things, establish a fund to be known as the Families of Fallen Service Men Support Fund, into which shall be paid all monies prescribed under the bill and monies received as donations, bequeaths, trusts, and contributions for the welfare of families of members 
of the armed forces and operatives of other security agencies who die in the line of duty, including the combat and non-combat duties. For the purpose of this bill, therefore, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, may I define families of fallen servicemen to include families of members of the armed forces and operatives of other security agencies who die in the line of duty, be it combat or non-combat death. Mr. President, my highly respected colleagues, we all know that coping with the death of loved ones is an enormous load to bear as it sparks as it sparks traumatic heartbreaks that can lead to feelings of desertion or indignation in addition to deep pregnancy. In the case of families of foreign heroes, it is even more burdensome because in any of such circumstances of the loss of a loved one, a grieving spouse may have the additional responsibility of caring for the children, helping them to cope with the loss and change in their lives and in some cases, families of foreign servicemen further experience additional senses of loss from having to move outside of their military community, which includes a change of school for their children. The surviving spouse or other family members may suddenly become solely responsible for the family's financial situation. Mr. President, my very distinguished colleagues, may I state here that until you meet some of the families left behind by security operatives who die in the line of duty in Nigeria and witness the reality of the devastating blow, the laws are dead on them, you may never be able to appreciate what it means to take the bullet for your dear country. May I state further, Mr. President, that since the start of insurgency in Nigeria, thousands of troops have been killed by Boko Haram group leaving behind their families in the unpredictable hands of fate. Leaders of the Military Widows Association, MIWA, stated that more than 11,000 registered members and the num <coughs> registered members are involved and the number keeps growing by the day. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, given the security situation in our dear country, Nigeria, it has become pertinent to enact a law that will establish a fund to take care of the welfare challenges facing the indigent families of security operatives who die in the line of duty. In return for the sacrifices of military and paramilitary members of the armed, force, armed services of the Federation who die defending our dear sovereignty against internal and external aggression, Mr. President, most respected colleagues, the families they leave behind deserve our support to live confident and productive lives. Mr. President, special colleagues, I humbly urge all of us to support this bill and pass it accordingly because every support received by families of our fallen heroes has a great value and translates to strengthening the security of our lives and property in our dear country, promoting peace and stability. I ask you, therefore, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, to give your support for this bill to be read a second time. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Sadiq Suleiman Umar. Thank you, Mr. President. My distinguished colleagues, I am Sadiq Suleiman Umar. I represent the good and decent people of Kwara North, and we all are. Mr. President, I rise to second that this bill be read for the second time. My support to, for this bill, Mr. President, is because of the necessity for people who take bullets for all of us, for people who make sure that we are all safe, should be shown the deserved respect and love and care. Mr. President, like the lead bit has expressly described the trauma people who have they are breadwinners, folly is better imagined. Mr. President, looking at the cost and what it will entail to get this up is very, very minimal. The sacrifices 
of our fallen hero cannot be quantified and is far more than what it is. Therefore, Mr. President, I join my own distinguished brother who people love to describe as a former comrade. He has shown that he's all, he remains a comrade. And I'm so proud of him for bringing this bill for consideration. Thank you, Mr. President. Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. Those against say nay. Nice have it. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the single senators, a bill for an act to establish the families of Polish Hero Polish Servicemen Support Fund and for other related matters 2021, SB 345, second reading. A bill for an act to establish the families of Fallen Servicemen Support Fund and for other related matters 2021, second reading taken and the bill is referred to the Committee on Establishment and Public Service Matters to report by within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the seventh order of the day is the second reading of the Clean Nigeria Agency Establishment Bill 2021. Distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in this distinguished chamber on Tuesday, 2nd March 2021. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished senator Clifford Odia to move the motion for the bill to be read the second. Distinguished senator Clifford Odia. Thank you, Mr. President, my very useful colleagues. I am Senator Clifford Odia. I represent a uh, dual center central district. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, civil colleagues, I'm delighted to lead the debate on the general principles for the Bill for Act to provide for the establishment of Clean Nigeria Agency for the purpose, among others to prohibit open urination and defecation in order to keep Nigeria clean and free from diseases. This bill was read for the first time in Senate plenary on 2nd of March 2021. Health, they say, is wet. And a healthy nation is a wedding nation. This, on this premise, I'm leading this debate. If you recall the same colleagues, on the 19th of November 2019, when Nigeria joined the rest of the world to commemorate World Toilet Day, I gave a personal explanation in this chamber with clear reference to the Senate Standing Order 43 on the need to increase sensitization on the dangers of open defecation. Coincidentally, on the, on the 20th of November 2019, the President issued a Presidential Executive Order 009 on the open defecation free in Nigeria by 2025 and other related matters. Important to this order, the Secretariat, the Ministry of Water Resources, called Clean Nigeria Agency Secretariat, was created to coordinate and drive the implementation of the said special executive order. This bill is a product of paragraph 5 of the above executive order, which states that the National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly shall enact legislation on the practice of open education with appropriate sanctions and penalties. It's a great this backdrop that this bill was conceptualized to give a legal framework for the execution of the presidential executive order. The importance of this bill cannot be overemphasized, considering the place, the place of pride Nigeria occupies in African continent. According to Melissa Cook, in 2019, founder and managing director of African Soros Partners, Nigeria has overtaken South Africa as Africa's largest economy. And with a population of over 200 million people, there is the largest market in the continent. Its population is about twice the size of Ethiopia, 110 million, and Egypt, 102 million. Despite this giant posture, economic outlook of the country, Nigeria wears a shameful clap of being the leading nation in the world with the highest number of people practicing open defecation and urination. Estimated at over 46 million people, the practice has had a negative effect on the populace and, uh, and on the economy, making it almost impossible for the country to meet the 2030 deadline for achieving Goal 6 
of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, which aims at ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Evidence shows that one of the major services of, for iron deficiency anemia among adolescent girls and young mothers is as a result of worm infestation and is attributed to open defecation. An anemic mother, in all probability, will deliver a low birth weight baby, not only endangering the life of the newborn baby, of the newborn, but also the mother. It is therefore not surprising that one in every 15 Nigerian dies before reaching his or her birth, first birthday, and one in every eight, eight does not survive to see so her fifth birthday. Apart from the stench that emanates from open urination and duplication sites, it also provides a breeding ground for disease-causing organisms. Research has, has it that a gram of human feces contains more than 10 million viruses, 1 million bacteria, 1,000 parasite seeds, and 100 parasite eggs, which can be harmful to human health and the environment. Sometimes you wonder why you just wake up one morning and develop headache, fatigue, no sir, stomach ache, etc., etc. These are sometimes these are sometimes symptoms of disease like malaria, dysentery, cholera, diarrhea, polio, and typhoid that have become prevalent in our society as a result of poor hygiene, hygienic culture, all of which in the in the worst scenario can lead to death. Open defecation is not only a social stigma, stigma, but also a factor contributing to violence against young girls and young married women. Findings from a research conducted by Water Aid in certain slums in Lagos State revealed that in a quarter of women defecating in the open had, had either their first, second, had experience of harassment, a threat of violence, or actual assault in the previous 12 months, and over two, two thirds of them felt unsafe using a shared or community toilet in a public place because of fears of contacting vaginal carditis, formerly known as toilet disease. The economy is not spread from the escorting effect of open defecation as Nigeria loses over 455 billion or 3 billion US dollars annually due to poor sanitation. This works out to be 2, two US dollars per capita per year and constitutes 1.3% of Nigeria's GDP. This is a World Bank report of 2012. According to the same report, open division alone costs Nigeria over $1 billion a year. The market potential of sanitation in the country is indeed very huge for both government and the private sector to take advantage of. Considering the above negative impacts and socioeconomic opportunities of shameful practice of urinating and advocating in the open, there is no gain saying, however, that providing a legal framework and creating an agency in the form of subsidiary legislation to prohibit open urination and defecation is not only eminent but long overdue. This be when passed into law, we establish and empower the Clean Nigeria Agency to enforce the penalties and sanctions prescribed by this bill. Furthermore, the bill will also empower the agency to, among others, make rules and regulations for enforcing and implementing the provision of this act. Two, issue license to private or corporation for the operation of commercially owned public toilets. Three, certify a public facility to be fit for use by the public. And four, shut down any public place that does not meet the required recommended standard of toilet facility. These express powers that this being given to the community agency are essential if Nigeria wants to achieve the open deprivation free posture by 2025. In conclusion, my colleagues, I urge you to give your support to this bill, take into consideration the social, economic, and health, health benefits it will bring to the country and its citizens. I have attached, in line with Order 77, paragraph 3 of the Senate rules, this, the, the estimates to implement this bill. I so submit, Mr. President. Deputy Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I am Boacha Emmanuel, I represent Araba South. Mr. President, the bill in question here is not contentious, and it is for the interest of us as citizens. It's 
obvious that a clean environment breeds healthy people. Mr. President, going by the character of this bill, clearly, if passed second reading, will help strengthen the policy statement was held, that was earlier issued. We are aware that there was a drive towards this, achieving this open, defecation-free environment. But because it has not been put into law or given a legislative date, probably that is why Nigerians have not treated it with the desired discipline. And I, if I may take us back, Mr. President, I recall in the mid-80s, in the youthful days of Mr. President, the war against discipline, which actually put us on the path of history and started a good course for Nigerians, was seen to have yielded results because we obeyed most of those uh, rules that were shown out for a clean environment. And before COVID-19, Mr. President, it, the practice generally will have been anything you do, you need to sanitize your hands, clean your hands. But most of us got used to this sanitizer because of COVID-19. And actually, it's supposed to have been the traditional practice. I pray, Mr. President, that this bill will be given the needed support so that Nigeria will come out a clean nation with clean people, with clean attitudes, and we will truly occupy our pride of place as giant of Africa and focusing on Africa as the center of our foreign policy. And that, that's the only way we will be respected as a nation that is taking the lead. Thank you, Mr. President, and I urge my colleagues. Is anybody against the bill? Those who vote that this bill will be now read a second time, say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act established the Clean Nigeria Agency for the purpose, among others, to prohibit open urination, open defecation, in order to keep Nigeria clean and disease-free 2021 SB 652. Please, uh, Chief Whip. Senator Abolo Jibril, please leave uh, Senator Okemi alone. A bill for an act to establish the Clean Nigeria Agency for the purpose, among others, to prohibit open urination, open defecation in order to keep Nigeria clean and disease-free 2021. Second reading taken and the bill is referred to Committee on Water Resources to report by within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the eighth order of the day is the second reading of the Police Service Commission Establishment Act 20, uh, 20, 2001 Amendment Bill 2021. The distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in this distinguished chamber on Tuesday, 1st December. 2020. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Tungu Senator Emmanuel Bocha to move the motion for the bill to be read the second time. Mr. Tungu Senator Emmanuel Bocha. Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, may I humbly seek your consent to lead the debate of this pivotal bill which seeks to amend the Police Service Commission Act 2001. This is with a view to strengthen it for effective oversight of the Nigerian police force for a result-oriented force of police service. The bill was read for the first time in this chamber on, the, on Tuesday, 1st December 2020. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, it is a fundamental best practice that the police should be held accountable for their actions through both internal and external mechanisms. This is because in addition to internal procedures for controlling officers' conduct, it is crucial for civilian oversight agencies to provide external supervision and most importantly, the leadership of the commission, which is done by retired policemen, is also key. And oversee robust systems and procedures to enforce accountability and discourage misconduct 
As a matter of fact, external procedures for reviewing citizen complaints against the police are more effective than internal police complaint review procedures. This is as long as the external system is robust, properly equipped, well constituted, and its operations reviewed periodically as society evolves. Interestingly, Nigeria already has a constitutional oversight body on the police now as the Police Service Commission. This government agency is the Nigerian version of the global standard of civilian oversight on police. It is one of the federal executive bodies established by Section 153M of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. By virtue of Paragraph 30, Part 1 of the Third Schedule to the Constitution, the Clause 6.1 of the Police Service Commission Establishment Act 2001, the Commission is charged with the responsibilities of appointment, promotion, dismissal, and disciplinary control of all persons holding offices in the Nigerian Police Force, except the Inspector General of Police. To ensure the independence of the Commission in the exercise of its powers and discharge of its functions, Clause 6.2 of the Act provides that the Commission shall not be subject to the direction, control, or supervision of any other authority or person in the performance of its functions other than as prescribed in this Act, or in the Act establishing the Commission. With this amendment, the following are a few benefits the Nigerian society will achieve. Complaint will be given a place to voice concerns outside the police, and they will be heard and treated with dispatch. This will reduce all incidences of the scenarios like the NSAS and all that. Police officers will truly be held accountable for their actions, and the Reformed Police Service Commission will improve the quality of the internal investigations in the police. Civilian mistrust of law enforcement officers and the police in particular is unfortunate but can be tackled. The fact that Nigeria already has a police service commission that was created to breach the gap and help build that trust relationship is crucial. However, a team is only as strong as its weakest link and the effectiveness of an oversight body will always depend on having a team that works well together and is able to see issues through pragmatic lens and have sufficient resources, both human, financial, and otherwise, to handle them with dispatch. A weakened and or structurally defective oversight body will not perform its intended functions optimally and cannot enforce accountability. In every sense, society, individuals, and organizations must experience consequences for their performance or actions. Without demanding and enforcing accountability, the result is obvious. Impunity, poor performance, and general misconduct will be overwhelming and lessons will never be learned. There is no better time than now to address police accountability and performance holistically. We must do this not only because we just witnessed a series of protests against the police and some of the units across the country, but also to forestall future occurrences, like I said, Mr. President. If we do not take the drastic and proactive steps at addressing this protest, the signs are clear that an unwanted mass civil revolution will not be avoided or imminent. I urge you all, distinguished colleagues, to support the speedy passage of this bill. The bill has no any financial implication when passed. Thank you most sincerely, distinguished colleagues. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Senator Chukuga Utazi. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to support the second reading of this bill meant for the reformation of Police Service Commission to make it amenable to the wishes and the demands of Nigerians that their police will be very, very accountable. And then uh, make sure that uh, 
the law and order is maintained in the country. Uh, I want to thank the sponsor of this bill, Senator Bacha Emmanuel of Taraba South, for coming forward with this uh, very, very important amendment, a strong intervention to make sure that the, the police is uh, well catered for, being oversighted by Police Service Commission. Mr. President, I ask every one of us here to support the second reading of this uh, bill. Thank you so much. Is anybody against the bill? Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes are clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, I will for an act to amend the Police Service Commission Act 2001 to strengthen it for effective oversight of the Nigeria Police Force and for other related matters 2021 SB 580 second reading. A bill for an act to amend the Police Service Commission Act 2001 to strengthen it for effective oversight of the Nigeria Police Force and for other related matters 2021 second reading taken and the bill is referred to the Committee on Police Affairs to report by within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the ninth order of the day is the second reading of the Court of Appeal Act Amendment Bill 2021. Distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in the distinguished chamber on Wednesday, 17th March 2021. Mr. President, we wish to invite distinguished Senator Chukuka Utazu, the voice of the Senate, to move the motion for the bill to be read the second time. Mr. President, I'm Senator Chukwoka Otaze, and I represent the good people of Enugu Nasa Central District of Enugu State. I rise to lead the debate for the second reading of uh, the Court of Appeal Act 2013 uh, Amendment uh, uh, brought before this. Uh, Senate read the first time of this, uh, on the floor of the Senate on 17th day of March 2021. This bill seeks to amend the Court of Appeal Amendment Act 2013 by increasing the number of justices of the Court of Appeal from 90 to 110 to, uh, uh, 10, to allow for creation of more divisions of the Court, appointment and elevation of judges from the lower courts to the courts of appeal to bring the court closer to litigants and ensure speedy disposal of cases and reduction of congestion in existing court of appeal divisions. The court of appeal is established under section 237 of the 1999 Constitution as amended and uh, section 1 of the court of appeal act. The court is serious with original jurisdiction over presidential election petitions and any question as to whether the term of office of the president or vice president has ceased or the office of the president or vice president has become vacant. It also exercises appellate jurisdiction to the exclusion of any other court of law in Nigeria over decisions of the Federal High, of Federal High Court, High Court of FCT, High Court of a State, Sharia Court of the FCT, Sharia Court of Appeal of a State, Customary Court of Appeal of the FCT, Customary Court of Appeal of a State, and from decisions of court, of court marshals or other tribunals as been prescribed by the Act of National Assembly. In spite of the endemous responsibility vested on the court, its composition and expansion has lagged behind the volume of appeals before it, hence litigants are often made to wait for several years to get their appeals heard and concluded. It will be recalled that at inception in 1976, the Court of Appeal had three divisions, namely Lagos, Cardona, and Enugu divisions. By 19, uh, uh, 1977, the number of divisions were increased to five with the establishment of Bini and the Ibadah divisions. More divisions were subsequently created. As of today, the Court of Appeal has 17 divisions 
with less than 70 justices spread across these divisions to hear pending appeals and to exercise its original jurisdiction over presidential election petitions, both of which have become overwhelming for the courts due to the sheer number of cases and limited number of justices to hear and determine such cases. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the Court of Appeal is currently suffering from chronic congestion and has a huge backlog of cases due to the volume of appeals in its docket, due to the limited number of divisions and justices available to hear these appeals. Very recently, about 18 nominees were shortlisted and recommended for appointment to fill 20 existing vacancies. According to the President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Monica Dongban Bensen, all the 18 nominees are eminently qualified for appointment as Justices of the Court of Appeal. However, only 20 were finally penciled down for consideration, while another 20 of the nominees were to be caught on a reserve list. Another 40 still have their fates hanging in the balance. This unfortunate situation is mainly because going by principal act, except an amendment is affected on the Court of Appeal Act, only 20 justices can be appointed at the moment. It is therefore a matter of urgency for Senate to address this deadlock by amending Section 1 of the Principal Act by increasing the number of justices from 90 to 110. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, this bill is critical to ongoing efforts to reform justice administration in the country, and if passed, will pave way for appointment of more justices of Court of Appeal and allow for creation of more divisions of the courts to help the congest the Court of Appeal and bring the courts closer to litigants. It will also address the cases of marginalization in the appointment of justices of courts as alleged by some sections of the country. In compliance with Order 77.3 of the Senate Stanton Orders 2015 as amended, a financial compendium showing the financial implication of the previous rule will be where on the public treasurer is yet attached for consideration for your kind consideration. I wish to appeal to my colleagues to support the expeditious passage of this bill because of its national importance. Thank you so much, my colleagues. Senator Odi. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Stephen Adi Ode. I represent the good people of Cross River North. Mr. President, I want to commend the sponsor of this bill, Senator Tazi, for coming up with this very wonderful bill. You recall that one of the greatest challenges we have in our judiciary today is the number of justices to address litigation. Now that we have multiplicity of litigation from one state to the other, and the Court of Appeal is very, very strategic. When you look at the load work for some of these justices, at a point when litigant gets to court, one of the greatest challenges you have is people who complain that we don't have justices to address the number of issues that have been brought before them. I believe that with the increment as proposed by Senator Otazi, if it is adopted, then the issue of getting justice in our various courts, particularly the Court of Appeal, will be addressed. Because when issue gets from the lower court to the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal is very strategic at a point some of this litigation may end at the Court of Appeal. But where you don't have justices to address some of these challenges, then litigants, because it is only when justice is gotten that Nigeria will be happy for it. So I stand to support this bill in totality, and I hope that if this hallowed chamber considers this bill, Nigeria will be better for it. Thank you, Mr. Is anybody against the bill? Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act to amend the Court of Appeal Act 2013 
increasing the number of justices of the Court of Appeal from 90 to 110, and for other related matters, 2021, SB 670 separate. A bill for an act to amend the Court of Appeal Act 2013, increasing the number of justices of the Court of Appeal from 90 to 110, and for other related matters, 20 to 21, second reading taken. And the bill is referred to the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and Legal Matters to report by within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. The President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the 10th order of the day is the second reading of Federal College of Education, uh, Federal College of Forestry, Wawazan Geduku, Gombe State Establishment, etc. Bill 2021. Distinguished senators will recall that the bill was read the first time in this distinguished chamber on Tuesday, 6 February 2020. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Saeedu Ahmed Al Kali to move the motion for the bill to be read the second time. Distinguished Senator Saeedu Al Kali. The President of the Senate, my very distinguished and respected colleagues, I am Senator Seidu Al-Ghali. I represent Gombe North. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the bill for an act to establish the Federal College of Forestry Wawas and Leduku, Gombe State to provide full-time courses in forestry technology to improve genetic resources of forest trees and ecosystem for economic development applied science management and other field of studies and to make provision for the general administration of the college 2020 sb 308 was read the first time on thursday 6 february 2020. mr president my distinguished colleagues gombe state was carved out of the defunct bauchi state on 1st october 1996 by the general sunny abacha regime with a total land area of 20,265 square kilometer and a population of about 2,358,879. The bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 6 February 2020. The bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 6 February 2020. The bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 6 February 2020. The bill was read the first time on Tuesday, 6 February 2020 in titling the 65% of total cultivable land area of the state. No doubt, it is widely acclaimed to be the major food basket of the entire Northeast sub-region, going by the abundant rich agricultural product. Point of order, leader. Mr. President, uh, I rise to move a point of order for this distinguished chamber to suspend uh, its order 13 of its uh, uh, standing orders in order to facilitate the continu uh, continuation of this session beyond the stipulated 2 p.m. Uh, that is in the order paper. I Minority Leader. Mr. President, I rise to second the motion as moved by the Leader of the Senate. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the Senate suspends is standing order 13 to enable the seat beyond 2 p.m. Say aye. Those against any of the ice have it. You may continue, please. Going by the abundant rich and rich agricultural produce and raw materials that are grown there, such as cereal, legume, industrial and tree crop, as well as livestock and fisheries. Farmers in the area also feel greatly encouraged by the availability of quite a number of agro-allied industries processing and grading their products. Prior to the period of Nigerian independence in 1960 and beyond, Gombe was identified as an airmark and one of the three main agricultural development centers, along with Gusau in the present Zamfara State and Huntua in the present Kazina State. The famous Gombe Agricultural Development Project, GADP, has impacted positively in transforming the economic history of the entire Northeast sub-region whose people equally share common feelings against the threat of environmental hazard. While it is true that the entire Northeast growing prosperity is not in doubt, unfortunately, as a result of the age-long negative effect of human factor, especially due to fast-growing number of farmland 
and other uncontrolled human activity, the entire sub-region has been exposed to an imminent danger of environmental hazard. For instance, in Gombe State, where unlike what is obtained 40 years ago, where agricultural production was sustained hand in hand with strict adherence and preservation of our forests and its resources. Today, however, significant percentage of the blessed savanna forest is first giving way to unchecked deforestation and encroachment on the nearly 238,000 hectares grazing hectares grazing reserve in the state. As a matter of fact, it is quite well known globally that the entire sub-region is now under a severe threat and require all hands to be on deck to solve the problem of desert encroachment, low rainfall, extreme temperature and effect of climate change. While the federal government, as well as national assembly, state government and other donor agencies are doing everything possible to address the current ecological and other environmental challenges facing the sub-region and other affected areas in the country. There is therefore need to gear up towards expanding the scope of meaningful investment in professional education that will keep producing experts in the field of forestry and soil conservation to tackle the phenomena. Thus, the imperative of establishing the proposed Federal College of Forestry Wawazange to be considered timely and apt. The proposed college will serve as a professional training ground for middle-level manpower in forestry to cater for the overall need of the entire Northeast in particular and Nigeria in general. Currently, there is only one college of forestry in the entire North and that is the College of Forestry JOS. This, in fact, is grossly inadequate, considering the fact that the entire North is equally faced with a multitude of environmental and economic challenges. Imperative for forestry in our daily lives. Mr. President, my distinguished colleague, the world population is projected to increase from 7.6 billion to close to 10 billion by 2050. The corresponding global food demand and food estimated to be cultivated during this period is placing enormous pressure on the way to utilize our productive land, particularly in developing countries where the overwhelming majority of the poor are concentrated. The way to increase agricultural production and improve food security without reducing forest area is one of the greatest challenges facing researchers and policy makers alike. And therefore, we shall be seen to be up and doing in making sure the relevant professional institutions are established to take up these challenges. No human society can survive without forests. Forests are huge reserves of plants and trees that they play a significant role in our survival. While more than 30% of the earth's land surface is covered by forest. Only an estimated 10% of Nigerian land mass is covered by forest. Suffice to say that the importance of forest to our daily lives cannot be underestimated. From the air we breathe, the fruits we eat, and the timber and wood that we process in making paper, furniture, and in constructing houses, bridges, and cooking of food, etc. Forests, no doubt, are vital significance to our daily lives. Apart from the humans, forests also provide natural habitat to diverse animal, birds, and insect species. The ecosystem that contain many valuable plant species also add considerable value in providing shelter, drugs, and fiber for our existence. Let me also add that our forests additionally help to maintain environmental stability and ecological balance as they reduce wind force, air temperature, and bring about better rainfall. They add to the forest floor large quantities of leaves, twigs, and branches, which easily decompose to force humus that increase soil fertility and ultimately become local fertilizer. The imperative of the college. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, in light of the foregoing, there is the urgent need 
not to only accord forestry education and forestry research a special place, especially in a developing country like ours, but equally to support and appropriate funds in setting up quite a number of institutions in the country. This is evident, taking into consideration the limited number of forestry institutions and colleges of forestry that we have in Nigeria. Permit me to appeal to our conscience in order to see reasons when faced with an array of environmental challenges that require urgent and drastic concerted effort to be addressed. Another most important point to note also is the fact that the number of available men and women who have necessary requisite forest education and scientific talent to give professional training and carry out research in forestry is very limited in our country. And also to do that, it is almost practically impossible by having only one college of forestry in the entire northern Nigeria and with none in the entire northeast sub-region that is bedeviled by mounting problems of land degradation and fast encroachment on Karotin Desert. For purpose of convenience, the College of Forestry Wawazange when established would have proximity to the famous Wawazange forest that was identified, marked and gazetted by the federal government as a grazing reserve. Only recently, in October 11, 2019, the Honorable Minister in company of Gombe State Governor was at the forest for launching of the Pilot National Livestock Transformation Scheme aimed at bringing suko to pastoralists, nomads and farmers alike. This should therefore be considered like a clarion call toward evolving a comprehensive approach to solving our environmental challenges. When the college the college when established will seek to address, among others, the existing learning gap of having well-trained extension workers that will provide the necessary technical know-how and intensive public awareness campaign on sustainable environmental practices and conservation, provision of gainful employment and or training of our teaming and employed women and youth and the disabled even under the vocational training program to be self-reliant carrying out of extensive research and development of sustainable technology, growth and package that will mitigate environmental degradation, such as sufficient, cheap and sustainable household energy for cooking, training of middle-level manpower for government, private and industrial sector, development of new plant and improvement of local plant for livestock and environmental protection, provision of job opportunities to many Nigerians and wealth creation, ensuring sustainable agricultural practice and production, the bill and the financial compendium. Mr. President, my distinguished colleague, I urge you to support the second reading of this bill. Thank you for your consideration. Senator Tolu Odebi. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleague. My name is Tolu Odebi, and I represent the people of Ogun West. Mr. President, let me first of all commend the mover of this motion. It's a motion that I think is very apt, and I think it addresses a lot of issues that even being felt globally at the present moment. Mr. President, it would be interesting to note that only 30% of the world's land space is being, is, is being covered by forests. And right now, we are losing about 3.5 million kilometers, square kilometers of land to deforestation. If we look at Nigeria now, we have about 350,000 square, uh, square kilometers of land that also has gone to deforestation. So having a college of forestry will provide the necessary skills for people to understand what is happening to our forest, the issue of desaturation, uh, say, the certification that is also happening from the Sahel down, and also it will also enable to create the necessary manpower uh, that is needed. So for me, I think this is a very good bill. I think it's a bill that we should all support. I think uh, it's a bill that also creates, creates a lot of opportunity, especially in light of these carbon credit opportunities that also we can also earn from, uh, from our forests. So I strongly support this bill. Thank you very much. Senator Thamiriga. 
Thank you, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues. I'm Senator Kabiru Gare, representative of the of Kano South from Kano State. Mr. President, I would like to commend Senator Sayyid Al Ali for bringing this bill uh, to establish a college that needs to do more on developing on, on, on forestry because most of our states surrounding Gombe have been affected by desert encroachment. Jigawa, Kano, Kasina, all our areas affected by desert encroachment. So if we have students in this college and the college is established, they will come up with a new technological system for improving the way we could plant more trees in order to prevent desert encroachment. I therefore support this bill, which is straightforward, the question for establishment of this college. And Mr. President. Is anybody against the bill? Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished senators, a bill for an act established a federal college of forestry, Wawas and Geduku, Gombe State, to provide full time courses in forestry technology and development, improved genetic resources of forestries, and ecosystem for economic development and applied science management and other fields of studies and for related matters 2021 SB 308 second reading. A bill for an act to establish the Federal College of Forestry, Wawazange Duku, Gombe State to provide full-time courses in forestry technology and development to improve genetic resources of forest trees and ecosystem for economic development and applied science management and other fields of studies and for related matters 20 to 21 second reading taken and the bill and the bill is it supposed to be tertiary institutions and the bill is referred to the committee on tertiary institutions and third fund to report back within four weeks is it supposed to be third fund, uh, tertiary institutions It's agriculture. Okay, well, let's let's say tertiary institutions, the lead committee, and then agri. Is that okay? Okay, the bill is referred to the committees on tertiary institutions and third fund and committee uh, and agriculture and rural development to report back uh, within four weeks. Leader of the Senate. Mr. So President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the 11th order of the day is a motion standing in the name of the distinguished Senator Efeni Patrick Oba on the urgent need to investigate the economic and security implications of the dominance of the Nigerian retail sector by foreigners and also consider appropriate legislative measures to incentivize and protect indigenous retail traders. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the distinguished Senator if any, Patrick Oba, to move this motion. The Senator, if any, Oba. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. My distinguished colleagues, I'm Senator Ifa Oba, representing the good people of Anambra South. Mr. President, my motion is on the need to investigate the economic and security implication of an unregulated Nigerian retail sector and also consider appropriate legislative measures to protect indigenous retail traders. The Senate notes that the Nigerian retail sector remains unregulated with their economic and security implications. Senate also Note that the Chinese, Indians, and Lebanese companies have taken over the retail businesses from indigenous retailers in markets like Balogu, Tretfe, Aspanda, Alaba, Coca, Computer Village, Day Day, and Nyanya markets where they have shifted from production and wholesaling to retailing. Mr. President, 
because as in Nigerian independence, particularly between 1960 and 1970, organized retail outlets in Nigeria, first tier cities such as Lagos, Kaduna Kano, Port Harcourt, were operated exclusively by large multinationals, retail outlets chains such as Leventis, UTC, Lenas, Bata, Chilarems, and Kingsway. Senate observes that apart from offering employment to Nigerian citizens and providing revenue to government in terms of taxes, the Nigerian retail business landscape has other immense economic and security implications, which calls for ideal policy and regulatory measures that will attract the needed foreign investment to our economy and at the same time protect indigenous retail business investors. Aware that while many African countries, including ECOWAS member states, such as Ghana, have policies and legislative measures in place to offer minimum protection to indigenous retail traders. In the case of Nigeria, however, extant policies and legal frameworks at both national and sub-regional level do not offer any minimum protection to our indigenous retail business operators. Observe that unlike Section 27 of the Ghana Investment Promotion Council Act, which exempts foreigners from certain retail activities and further provides minimum protection to indigenous Ghanaian retail traders against foreigners, which is visibly seen in few, few years ago, Section 17 of, and 18 of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Council Commission Act prohibits both foreigners and Nigerian citizens from engaging in certain economic activities, including retail of products from such business activities without any special incentive or, promote or protection to Nigerian citizens. Observe further that apart from the provision of the NIPC Act, which fails to offer any special protection to indigenous retail traders, the ECOWAS Protocol on Free Movement of Persons right of residence and establish, establishment further and establishment further complicates the fate of the indigenous retail traders by guaranteeing citizens of ECOWAS member states free entry to their citizen of their citizens and residents without visa for 90 days. Note that the implication is that while organized retail businesses in Nigeria made up of multi, multiple branches, supermarkets, strong franchises, Mega supermarkets, shopping malls, ETC, is dominated by foreigners such as the Lebanese, Indians, and the Chinese through their popular retail outlets. I'm concerned that if no major, if no measures are taken by government to forestall the growth of an expansion of the indigenous retail traders, Eastern policies and legal frameworks at national and sub-regional levels may not offer clarity in terms of the incentives and protections available to them, even as foreigners continue to dominate the Nigerian retail trade landscape. Senate accordingly resolved, Mr. President. One, urge the federal government to review the Indigenization Act and then other extended policies, other extant policies and legal frameworks with a view to providing incentives and of protection to indigenous retail businesses in the Nigerian organized retail sector. Call on government at all levels to put in place acceptable measures to protect tra tra traditional and open market retail retailers, to avoid contravention of environmental and health safety standards, promote revenue collections, and prevent harassment and constant disruption of retail retail trade activities by governments, by government revenue collectors or environmental and health enforcement officers. And mandate the Committee on Trade and Investment to engage the Ministry of Trade and Investment and other relevant stakeholders with a view to receiving briefing on the extant policies and legal framework on the retail trade in Nigeria and to protect and protection offered to indigenous retail investors and to report back within two weeks. Finally, 
to engage local retailers with a view of engaging them on ways to protect their interests as well as invite the foreigners, foreign retailers, to ascertain their legal status. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Fados. Thank you, Mr. President. My distinguished colleagues, um, the motion moved by my brother, Senator Ifai, on the need to regulate and control the trade and protect the trade trade in Nigeria. It's a welcome development and uh, it's a long overdue motion. Um, simply because the, for, uh, the economic policy on the trade trade in this country have been weakened by the influx of foreigners into our trade trade uh, uh, value chain, particularly those Indians, Lebanese, and so on that he has mentioned. To the extent that they are even in uh, Buru the change uh, services in the country. Uh, inadvertently, they control the economy within because they can provide the, the fund. Uh, if care is not taken, all the shopping malls and so on that are, being, are coming up, most of them are being uh, sponsored by the foreigners, particularly if you look at job rights, there are South African behind it. Unlike other countries, like Ghana, that has specific policy. And when you enter their country, you want to do business, you must pay $300,000. And that is what is affecting our people in Ghana now. One million, now, one million dollars. If you cannot do that, you go. If you want to go into banking, you can only provide the fund, take your license, and the chairman of the banks will be there. All the remaining officers are Ghanaians. If you don't comply, you go. Most of Nigerian entrepreneurs that have gone there, they have liquidated because they could not comply. Nigeria, anything goes. If this Halo Chamber cannot put down a policy that will protect the retailers in this country, then we are in trouble. So I wholeheartedly support the move of this motion that we should protect our own interests and put a policy and put a seat policy on ground that will prevent the foreigners from sending away all our uh, retail retailers out of the market so that our own population can be engaged. Thank you very much. Is any is anybody against uh, anybody against? We we'll go to the press. the federal government to review the indigenization act and other eastern policy and legal framework with a view to providing incentives and or protection to indigenous retail business investors in the nigerian organized retail sector those in favor of prayer one say aye those against say need aye say prayer two call on governments at all levels to put in place acceptable measures to protect traditional or open market retailers, avoid contravention of environmental and health safety standards, promote revenue collection and prevent harassment, and constant disruption of retail trade activities by government revenue collectors or environmental and health enforcement officers. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay. Prayer three mandate the Committee on Trade and Investment to A engage the Ministry of Trade and Investment and other related relevant stakeholders with a view to receiving briefing on the extent policy and legal framework of retail trade in Nigeria and the protection offered to indigenous retail investors and to report back within two weeks. B, engage, the spelling of engage, G is missing, 
engage local retailers with a view to engaging them on ways to further protect their interests as well as invite the foreign retailers to ascend their legal status. Those in favor of prayer three, say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have been. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the twelfth order of the day is a motion staying in the name of distinguished Senator Biodun Olujimi on the election violence in Ekiti and need to eschew restraint. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Biodun Olujimi to move the motion. Sir Senator Biodun Olujimi. Thank you very much, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. I am Biodun Olujimi. I represent Ekiti South, Senatorial District of Ekiti State. Mr. President, with pain in my heart, I rise to move a motion on the bloody violence that marred the election in the House of Assembly in Ekiti State on Saturday. And everything especially happened at my Ward 7, Unit 7. Mr. President, the Senate notes that the Ekiti East constituency one seat became vacant following the death of Mr. Jua Adegui of the All Progressives Congress in the State House of Assembly. The Senate notes that the electoral body, INEC, fixed the by-election for last Saturday, 20th March, 2021. The Senate is aware that the exercise, which commenced on a very good note, in a peaceful and orderly manner, was suddenly disrupted at noon when hoodlums invaded the polling centers to snatch ballot boxes. The Senate is aware also that in the process, no fewer than three people were, were killed and many others injured in the Inomuwe Ekiti, Ekiti East local government area of Ekiti State. The Senate also concludes that no election and no election is worth the blood of any Nigerian as democracy is the government of the people by the people and, should be and people should be allowed to make their choices through their votes. The Senate accordingly resolved to, one, observe a minute silence for the dead, which includes a female nursing police woman. Two, order the federal government to ensure the safety of electoral officials, security personnel, and election materials during all elections. Three, urge the Inspector General of Police to order a full-scale investigation into the violence with a view to apprehend and bring to book the perpetrators of this dastardly act, and urge the National Assembly to accelerate the passage of the Electoral Act Amendment and also the Electoral Offenses Commission Bill currently before it to forestall all future occurrences. I so submit, Mr. President. Senator Michael Okemi-Bamidele. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. I'm Michael Okemi-Bamidele. I represent Ekiti Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, I want to second this motion as prayed in its entirety. And in seconding the motion, Mr. President, I want to say that I also identify with the views and the positions conversed by the mover of this motion, distinguished Senator Biodun Olujimi, who in fact was an eyewitness to um, the facts um, around which this motion uh, was uh, drafted. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, what we can do is to continue to call on all stakeholders, 
on the need for us to continue to remind ourselves and remind our people and our supporters that no position whatsoever is worth the blood of any human being. And to continue to ask for peace uh, from all sides of the divide each time there's an election. Several political parties participated in this election and for me it's not about any particular political party but it is about all of us as a people, as a state, as a nation. And as other elections approach, it is important that we continue to learn and to draw lessons from the implications you know, of things like this and to also continue to re-emphasize that it's just not worth engaging in any form of violence. Mr. Uh, President, I urge all our colleagues to uh, allow the prayers uh, as stated in the motion. And uh, again, it's really um, an unfortunate situation, but we need to move past this. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I'm Kabiru Gear of the people of Kano South from Kano State. Um, Mr. President, commending the mover of this uh, motion that uh, allowed me for bringing this motion is uh, is also in the process of our amending the Electoral Act and then the Electoral Offences Commission. Uh, all these facts were taken into consideration, and I believe that. Uh, no blood of Nigeria, no, no election is worth the blood of any Nigerian, as you said. Therefore, we should try and have free, fair, and credible elections. And for where we end up having a, a crisis like this, generally, INEC has stood on the pit that any election that there is violence to suspend or cancel that election and to when no mercy have returned in that terrain. So, Mr. President, I second her motion. And I go along with her prayers, her prayers, and there the number three. Why there is, I need to make an amendment when we come to prayer three. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Nicholas Topo. Thank you, uh, Senate President. This is a very sad experience. Uh, Senator Olujini is even lucky to be alive today because he was on ground when this shooting was taking place. And it's so sad that to conduct a House of Assembly election and people were killed. I think it's beyond, it's even beyond the strategy of police. There should be a judicial tribunal that should be set up by the federal government to go and investigate what happened. Because some fingers were pointed out that I cannot mention here. And it's very embarrassing. If we cannot manage our state very well, then something needs to be done. So I will suggest a judicial tribunal to go to Omo and carry out a powerful inquiry there. And anybody pointed out should be punished. A sinner will never go on rewarded. It's very embarrassing. And I congratulate Senator Olujimi that she's alive today. Thank you. Anybody against? We we'll go to the press. Prayer one. Observe a minute silence for the victims. Those involved with this prayer say aye. Those against say nay, the aye say. Prayer 2. Urge the federal government to ensure the safety of electoral officers, security personnel, and election materials during elections. Those involved prayer 2 say aye. Those against say nay, the aye say. Prayer 3. Urge the Inspector General of Police to order a full scale investigation of the violence with a view to appre 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 appreciate and bring to book the perpetrators of the dastard 
dastardly act isn't it so l and y missing those in favor of prayer three say aye those against say nay the ayes have and prayer four urge the national assembly to accelerate the passage of the electoral act amendment bill currently before it for stall future occurrences amendment senator kabirga oh senator walker carry thank you very much mr president distinguished colleagues my name is abaka carry senator representing borno north i just want to amend uh prayer number four that says urge the national assembly to accelerate the passage of the electoral act amendment bill i would also want to add the electoral offenses commission bill as well currently before it to postal future occurrences mm -hmm. i so amen senator kabir a second mr president i second the the amendment brought to you by the former chairman of INEC committee on I, uh, committee and uh, that was the prayer i wanted to make amendment for so i therefore second uh, his amendment thank you mr president apparently this is committee on INEC affair proposed by the former chairman seconded by the present chairman those in favor of prayer four as amended say aye those against say nay the aye say leader of the senate Yes, Senator Nicholas Sofomo, you are raising your hand. It's addi additional prayer. Yes. Additional prayer. Federal government should set up a judicial tribunal to investigate what happened at the election. Any seconder? Okay, Senator Francis Fadamsi. Mr. President, fellow distinguished colleagues, I like to support the additional prayer raised by Senator Tufoma. I so second. Those who have the additional prayer say aye. Those against say nay. That is it. One minute silence. May the souls of our departed compatriots rest in perfect peace. Amen. Leader of the Senate. Sir President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the 13th order of the day is a motion standing in the name of distinguished Senator Uche Lilian Ekunife on the killing of security personnel across a number of states on Thursday, 18th and Friday, 19th March, 2021. In the absence of the distinguished Senator, Mr. President, I move a motion for this matter to be stepped down to another legislative day. Honorable Leader. Mr. President, I ask to second the motion. The Soviet colleagues, those in favor of the motion that this item be stood down till another legislative day, say those again saying it, I serve it. Leader of the Senate. Sir President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, the 14th order of the day is a motion standing in the name of distinguished Senator Matthew Urugide on the urgent need to remove the difficulty faced by Nigerians outside the shores of Nigeria in renewing their passports. Mr. President, you may wish to invite distinguished Senator Matthew Urugide to move this motion. The Senator Matthew Rogide. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, my very distinguished colleagues, I'm Senator Matthew Urogide. I represent the good people of Edo South Ontario District. Mr. President, I have come up with a motion I apply to the urgent need to remove the difficulty faced by Nigerians outside the shores of Nigeria in renewing their passports. Mr. President, the Senate notes utmost concern with utmost concern the hardship faced by Nigerians in renewing their travel passport documents outside the shores of Nigeria. The Senate further knows further that was hit by these unacceptable hardships are Nigerians in the United States of America, Canada, Italy, the UK, and Austria. This is not to say that other countries of the world where a huge number of Nigerians reside do not experience this malaise. The Senate informed that in the United States of America, for example, there are only four centers, one in each four states, each of four states, where Nigerians can renew their passports, and they are Washington, D.C., Atlanta, New York, and California. That only four centers serve the whole of the United States is no problem in itself until we have to consider the fact that Nigerians in the remaining 46 states in the United States have to travel to the center closest to them or at times to a center cheaper in monetary terms to assess. The Senate is informed further that because of the facts in the preceding paragraph, some Nigerians are on the road for days on end for the, to the renewal centers from their places of residence, a situation which affects their jobs, their finances, and even safety of life. All of the passport renewal applicants spend months trying to renew expired passports. The only ones who get speedy attention are those that pay to the middlemen or directly to the embassy officials. The Senate holds that some states in the United States are bigger than some countries of the world, both in population and landmass, and as such, one center cannot serve the needs of Nigerians in them without recourse to renewal by post. The note holds further that it is surprised, it is surprised of the fact that Nigerians are made to be physically present at these renewal centers to be able to renew their passports. The reason given for requiring fiscal presence is that applicants need to be captured electronically for the new passport. This excuse is not tenable since fresh capturing should not be demanded of some of them who already, who already has its captured bio data in the database. Senate aware that in some or all of the renewal centers, there exist middlemen who are either working with or or for officials of the Nigerian embassies. This is especially true, especially true of renewal centers in the United States and Italy, as videos of this practice are watched in social media. In all the cases, these middlemen are not Nigerians, and demand for money from Nigerians to book for them, a capture or interview date with officials of the embassy. Aware further that visa issuance, passport renewal, and several other services rendered by the Nigerian embassies in many countries of the world have been turned into rackets by Nigerian officials and their foreign partners who connive to make life unbearable for their kinsmen that were employed that they were employed to serve that they were employed to serve. Payment for the renewal is done by using credit or debit cards of the holder or owner only for himself and herself. Payment for the children and any other family member is done using money order. And this money order has been sent, has, has to be sent by post. This has recorded missing money order and other hardships to parents and guardians. The, the Senate agrees that this development is unacceptable and must be discouraged forthwith for very obvious reasons. The Senate agrees further that the Nigerian image abroad it's already bastardized, and these practices are contributory since they have been going on, they have been going on for quite some time now. The Senate believes that unless urgent steps are taken now 
and decisively everything we believe in as a nation and have worked for and continue to work for to achieve will be undermined. Nigerians just cannot continue to treat fellow Nigerians the way even foreigners should not be treated. The Senate believes more intently that Nigeria embassy officials cannot feign ignorance of the hardship faced by Nigerians. The existence of middlemen and the inadequacy of number of renewal centers, these were all deliberately created by embassy officials to oil the wheel of the passport to visa racketeering. This name contends that one of the ways to stop the hardship is if renewal by post is introduced and pursued with diligence that it requires. And Senate contends further that the cleanup of the rot in our country must begin from somewhere. And in all decency, there is no better place to start than in our foreign missions abroad where we are in the face of the world. The Senate resolves accordingly at one, mandate the committees on interior and foreign affairs to engage the ministers of both the the Interior and Foreign Affairs Ministries, the Controller General of Immigration, with ambassadors to consular officers of the countries specifically mentioned to consider, amongst other things, A, making it possible to renew travel documents that is passports abroad by post. Two, increasing the number of centers where passports can be renewed abroad. And three, removing the existence of middlemen. And four, to hold regular or periodic assessment of the activities of Nigerian foreign missions. Mr. President, my very distinguished colleagues, I so move. Thank you very much. Can someone second the, the motion? Senator Olujimi. Thank you very much, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. I rise to second the motion on the urgent need to remove the difficulty faced by Nigerians outside the shores of Nigeria in renewing their passport. Mr. President, most of the people in diaspora go through so much hassle to be able to get new passports when their passports expire. And this should not be because these documents are uh, their entitlements and the basis for which they went there in the first place. And the need to ease the renewal is probably the best thing that can happen to our missions outside of Nigeria. I remember once when uh, so many people had to queue outside the Nigeria house in London and were paying through middlemen to get passports, that is not edifying for our country. And the earlier we uh, nip this in the board, the better for everyone. I second this motion, and I urge my colleagues to so do. Thank you, Mr. President. We we'll go to the prayers, please. Mandate, prayer one, mandate the committees on interior and foreign affairs to engage the ministers of both the interior and foreign affairs the Controller General of Immigration with the Ambassadors, Consular Officers of the countries specifically indicted, indicted, what do you mean indicted? Who indicted them? Which one do you prefer? Mentioned. Specifically, uh, consular officers of the country specifically mentioned to consider, amongst other measures, making it possible to renew travel passports documents abroad by post, increasing the number of centers where passports can be renewed abroad, and removing the existence of middlemen, and to hold regular or and or periodic assessment of the activities of Nigeria's foreign missions. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Well, thank you very much, distinguished uh, colleagues. Any additional prayer? All right. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues.
Uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's session, being a long one, of course. But uh, everything in the order paper has been exhausted. Uh, the Senate will go or proceed on its um, Easter break, but our committees will continue to do their work. The joint committee that is considering the petrol industry bill is uh, working uh, very hard to ensure that we receive the report as soon as we resume plenary uh, in April. Our committee on the review of the Constitution under the chairmanship of the Deputy President of the Senate is working around the clock. In fact, even tomorrow, I think there will be a meeting announced here. And so many other committees are working very hard. So this is just for the plenary to, uh, to be closed. But of course, our committees will continue to work. Uh, the Easter break will last from tomorrow, the 25th of uh, this month, March, to 13th, April 2021. So with this, uh, the Senate is hereby adjourned till uh, Tuesday, the 13th day of April, 2021 at 10 a.m. prompt. Happy Easter. <laughs>